right, and we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of The Verge Cast. I am Senior Editor Ross Miller. Joining me to my left, as always, always being the second time ever, is Senior Reviews Editor David Pierce. Yo. Uh, it is the very special edition iPad Mini After Party. Um, I'm going to make that work. It's the iPad Mini After Party? I like it. Can we make it like all one word and a hashtag? Uh, can and we then... camel kiss? Done. All right. Sold. Sorry, guys. Uh, let's, let's get focused. A uh, lot to do today. We have a lot of people coming in to talk to us. Um, anyway, just minutes ago, Apple CEO Tim Cook walked off stage. We had big announcements. The iPad Mini, as we expected. Uh, revised iPad third generation. I guess now iPad fourth generation. Yep. Uh, bigger surprises. Uh, Retina MacBook Pro. Um, actually, what are the ones? What are the big Macs? So there was a new the MacBook Pro, which... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's a new MacBook Pro, which they're not calling Retina. It, it is a Retina display, right. and it has, you know, it's the resolution, it has everything you want, but they're not calling it, like, the MacBook Retina or whatever, the same way they did with the first one. Right. Uh, there's a new iMac, which is super thin. Uh, it's a little more expensive than the last version, but it's uh, upgrades across the board. It's really thin, and they were, like, oohs and ahs in the audience all across as he was talking right. about it. Oh, there we, here we got it right here. Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks... Pretty fantastic. There's still, I love how much they talk about the chin on the thing, which uh, always makes me laugh. Um, sorry. But so that's that's new, and they, they kind of made a bigger deal out of Max here than I thought they were going to. Uh, there's the new Fusion Drive thing, which is kind of nifty. We'll get into that later, but it's right. part SSD, part hard drive. Um, and it was really, it was a lot of build up to the iPad Mini, which is clearly the main event. But there's a whole bunch of different things. A new Mac Mini. John, one of our video guys, was talking earlier, and he, he I don't bought. Know. Let's 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 be clear what happened to John. So John bought John, and correct me if I'm wrong here. You bought an iMac, a Mac Mini, and an iPad all in the last 12 months, right? The iMac was a little older. Okay, the iMac was a little older. But so in in a, the course of like 15 minutes, everything John owns is now completely out of date and awful, and he hates it. And well, first buy first and new. foremost, it's the nature of the beast. True. Second, I will never buy something he buys. That's fair. I just do not want yeah. to risk it. Just when John buys it, wait six months right. and get the new one when it comes out, inevitably. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's, that's really the rundown of it. There's, uh, they talked about new iBooks stuff. Right. Uh, and I was amazed how successful iBooks has been. I feel like it's been one of those things I that mean, Apple doesn't... They talk a lot about it, but it doesn't seem to really catch on. But then they're you know, throwing big numbers around about uh, how many books are being my, downloaded. Here's my question. Many, this, is, you know, this is me admitting a little bit of ignorance. Are those big numbers? I mean, Amazon does not talk about a lot, like, how much it's selling. Fair. Well, I'm sure, again, you're right, they don't talk that much about it. But from, um, according to, you know, compared to Barnes & Noble or Amazon, I'm sure they're small numbers. But right. I'm still surprised, uh, like, 400 million books downloaded, uh, 40 different languages that he made a big deal out of. You can swipe now to turn pages left and right, which he was super excited about. I guess. Remember, which is this, cool. is, this is, you know, we thought it was a big deal when they got copy and paste. Like, right. every Fair. little feature Fair. that should be there, we thought should be yeah. there, uh, it is a big deal to them. And, you know, to us as well, we're happy it's there now, obviously. No, absolutely. And uh, he was like, it's, it's the feature you've always wanted, and then, like, beat, beat, if you're in Japan. And then kind of laughed at himself, and I got a kick out of that. <laughs> um, but so, and yeah, but obviously, the real story here was, was the iPad mini. Yes. Uh, 7.9 inches. Uh, we are seeing leaks for 7.85. I mean, that's six one way, half dozen the other. Yeah. Uh, as Schiller, Phil Schiller said, 7.9, 9.7, it's easy to remember the difference. Yep. Um, I want to get into it a little more deeper later, and we have a lot of people who will call in and kind of talk to us about it. Um, you had the weirdest, no, no, not even the weirdest. You had such a tantrum when you saw the oh bezel. Oh, my gosh. So, okay. So, I, I, you know, play with a ton of different devices at various points, and the one thing that I hate most is devices with uneven bezels. So you have, on the top, there's, there's a bezel. Uh, and well, actually, the Nexus 7 has one, too. And you can actually see it. So it has, you have the top bezel here, which is you know black and stuff. <laughs> and then the side bezels are smaller. And like that's all well and good when you're reading. And then you turn it on the side, and suddenly the sides become enormous, and the top and bottom. It just looks bad, and I hate it. And I wish they didn't do it. And yeah, the iPad I love, has I a pretty it. even so bezel, angry, and it looks good. You're so angry you can't even finish your no, sentence. I just, it's irrational and ridiculous, and I know that, but I hate it, and I don't care, and I want everybody to know. All right. Uh, coming up, we'll take a deeper dive. Josh and Neil, I will hopefully be joining us later, uh, live from San Jose. Uh, first off, we have some breaking news, though. We got quoted. We did. Woo! And not, not just, not just yes. we, The Verge, like no, no, we, you and we. I. Yeah. These, high five. Oh, no. no, come on. What is, what is, there we go. You Thank you. Pump? So, Fine. What, what was the exact quote? So, as he was leading, Tim Cook comes out. Uh, talking about the iPod Touch. Right. Uh, and quotes, 
And he, in his just wonderful, kind of vaguely drawly voice that makes me think he's like bouncing me on it's my very, knee telling very me stories. Soothing. Yeah. This uh, year's iPod Touch is the best one ever. <laughs> it's really a device without competition. Right, and he, yeah, he says, this is what this The is Verge has to say. And I just immediately start getting tweets about, like, way to be a show for Apple. And I was like, well, whatever. Tim Kill quoted me. I'm, I'm, I'm a big deal. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's nice they're reading, you know, at least for the superlatives. I like to think the that best, Tim Cook is just trolling our forums all right. day under a various set of usernames. And I was all ready to mock you for it. And then I got referenced to. You did. You, got, feel, you, got, you got shillered. I got shillered. Yeah. Actually, when you put it that way, it feels a little better. <laughs> Uh, I had the Schiller killer on me. No, um, so we were talking. You were talking about the uh, the 15 inch MacBook Retina. Yep. And apparently, I said the display looked nice at some point <laughs> in the review. It is a nice. It is a nice display. It is. It's there, a very nice display. There may have been a couple words with the EST, greatest, beautifulest, bestest, revolutionaryists. I don't know, I something like that. Resolutionaryist. It's resolutionaryist. I think it might have been. Yeah. yeah so it's the most resolutionaryist uh, MacBook ever. Just I think right that there. was Ross pretty sure Miller. that was the, uh, yeah. the quote. I like it. Uh, we don't have any B-roll to prove it, <laughs> so you'll just take my word for it. Right. It definitely uh, happened. Yes. For sure. Um, yeah. So I mean, like, but I will say, uh, I will. You know, seven point nine inch iPad Mini. That's interesting. I am way more interested in the thirteen inch Retina right now. Interesting. Why? Uh, well, because first and foremost, it's three point five pounds. Yep. This this thirteen inch MacBook Air is just three pounds. The difference is so small, and it's such a it's way more compelling hardware on the inside. It looks gorgeous. I don't need a disk drive anyway. Uh, it's not going to hurt my back. 0.5 pounds, I will take that for a much better screen than this. It's expensive, though. Money's no option, man. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> not when you're, when you're Ross Miller. The famous, quoted by Phil Schiller, Ross Miller. This is, these are great words. That that from, the, from the famous uh, David Pierce, quoted yes. by Tim Cook, David no, Pierce. No, so I, I, I kind of... I don't know. I'm, I'm lukewarm on the MacBook Pro. Like it's it's nice. It's it's certainly a great upgrade. But I I don't quite have this. Uh, I don't know. I don't feel this desperate need to have the incredible displays on my laptops. I feel like when uh, you and I both spent a lot of time with the 15 inch when it was right. here, and it was like the things that looked good looked amazing, and then there was this whole subset of things that just looked terrible. Uh, and it's like, I'm going to want this display a year from now when everybody's updated their apps and their graphics. And... Are, are you, have you used the uh, Retina anytime recently? Uh, bits and pieces. Right. And it thinks it's, it's getting better really fast, for sure. Uh, but, and, you know, we've been complaining about this even on our own site. Like, the, you look at the navigation on our site on a Retina MacBook Pro, and it just doesn't look that good. And, like... well, in, well, to be clear, the text looks great. Sure. The pictures don't. Sure. And right. I'll give you that. The pictures do right. not look great. And so I'm like, I, I'm... I'd rather wait for the internet to catch up, and then I'll jump in with the hardware. And then, then it'll be amazing. But for now, like, I don't know. It's great. Don't get me wrong. But it's, right. it's not quite the, you know, my $1,700 isn't leaping out of my wallet right now. We're going to come back to that. Uh, we actually have, uh, pretty soon we're going to have Craig Maud. Uh, he is credited with designing Flipboard. He'll have a lot to say about, uh, you know. I imagine so, yeah. I'm hoping so. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to talk about, you know, sports ball and other Apple and, and things. And bezels. Bezels. Can we just keep talking about bezels? Can we not? That's all I want to talk about. Can we about. not talk it's about It's just, it's the worst. Your bezel the worst thing is in the my world. little uh, iPod Touch yeah, loop the thing, loop. Which I could not, I Gotta can't get over it. The loop. Wait, so that's, that's one of the things. The, it's the new, the iPad mini is barely thicker than that, so which is pretty like wild. This? And you, you can, you can just me. swing it. Yeah. It's, I'm going to take this away from you. you just, it's going to be fine. <laughs> Um, that's going to be a gif. Uh, oh well. Um, but yeah, so it's, what, it is between this and this in terms yeah, of thickness? it's 7.2 millimeters, All which, right. uh, this is, I believe, 7.5. Right. Uh, it's, it's made a little differently than the current iPads. Uh, has an aluminum body, and it looks great. I thought it was funny, he, like, made a whole deal out of holding it up in one hand. It was like, you know. Right. Mufasa style, like, showing the world. Wait, 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 um, wait, wait. Mufasa style from Lion King? Like Lion King style, yeah. No, no, didn't As he hold like, it with heel over two hands, though? Yeah, I guess it was two hands. That would be... You just ruined so the sorry. metaphor. Just... All right, now, if we could get a clip from the Lion King, that would be actually great. But if we <laughs> can't, uh, just take my word for it. Uh, it was two hands. Uh, I know my Disney. I'm actually a little ashamed you don't. I know, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll just... I'll just so go. technically, the iPad 1 was the Mufasa moment. This yes, is the twice fair. as efficient. Well, he comes out and does one of these. Yeah, but look, it's and he's making this whole big deal out of, you know, you can hold it in one hand. And I'm, I swear I will stop talking about the bezels. But when you hold something in one hand, the bezel actually becomes really important because, like, if you as you hold something in your left hand and you want to read or something, mm -hmm. you need somewhere to put your thumb. And on this, you're going to put it on the screen, and that doesn't work. 
And it's why, like, you look at uh, ebook readers, the Kindle Paperwhite or whatever. Right. They all have wide bezels on the side, so you can have somewhere to put your hand as you hold it. Uh, and this, it makes it just without more bezel there, it doesn't make as much right. sense in one hand. You know, I don't think it looks. I mean, I'm I'm glad it doesn't have too much bezel. I mean, let's look at the playbook. I still cannot stand the playbook design. How much bezel? Fair. Um, it's funny though. I kept looking at it, and the first thing I thought, and I really hate saying this, but the first thing I thought was, it's the Galaxy Note 2, a little bigger. Interesting. It looks like the front is very similar. Well, so that was. I mean, I got on the uh, on Twitter a lot as soon as it came out. A bunch of people were like, "Oh, it's actually an iPod Touch that's bigger," right. and like everybody made that joke. Uh, when it's, the first it, iPad came I think out, it's like, the oh, it's just a bigger thing, iPod maybe. Touch. But like, this really kind of is just a bigger iPod Touch. All right. Uh, well, um, good news. We should have on the line now Craig Mod. Craig Mod uh, is the designer of Flipboard. Um, he is currently uh, actually Craig. Are you with us? Let me just. We might as well just ask you. I'm, yeah, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? I yes. can hear you. You sound great. Uh, sound better than great. David, actually. So real quick, Craig, just tell us who you are. Um, well, I'm a writer and a designer. Uh, last year, I was a product designer at Flipboard. Uh, now I'm just independent, uh, doing consulting, and advising, and uh, and writing. Awesome. Well, Craig, thanks for joining us. Um, you know, uh, we're big fans of your work. Big fans, you know, some of the things you've written about in terms of design. We wanted to get you on. We wanted to talk to you about iPad Mini. Now, obviously, uh, you're still using the same 1024 resolution as the original iPad, but you're using it on a smaller screen. Uh, do right. you see any concerns with like? Any limitations that's going to put on developers with how they design uh, the interfaces? No, well, I mean, the one concern, I guess, that comes to mind immediately would be font sizes. Um, if you're using a small font size on the regular iPad uh, display, it may get a little bit too small if you shrink it down to 7.9 inches. But other than that, uh, I don't know. It's going, to be, it's going to be interesting going in and playing with all the apps and seeing how they feel kind of just like slightly, slightly reduced in size. Now, it's like, what is it? Is it 67%? Is that what they're saying? It's two I think that's about right, yeah. It's about right. Um, so you do, do you think of any apps off the top of your head that would actually have to design around the small limitation, like 10-inch uh, apps that had like smaller icons? Is this going to be a concern, you think? Well, I think it'll only be a concern for apps that did a poor job designing <laughs> for the 10-inch model. Uh, apps that are probably too busy, that have too much uh, going on on the screen. Um, so immediately what would come to mind would be sort of stock apps. I, I can imagine a lot of... Uh, stock quote apps, financial apps that are just you know a little bit over designed, too many scrolly things, too many small tap areas that will probably need a little bit of tweaking. But I think honestly, if you design for the seven inch screen uh, first and then it scales up to the ten inch, it will actually probably provide a better ten inch experience, bigger t bigger hit areas, uh, easier to read fonts, things like that. Um, one concern I see people coming up with uh, quite frequently is the lack of retina display. Um, what do you guys think about that? Are you are is that a concern for you? Is that is that something you see popping up uh, with your in your comments? You know, I was honestly I was I would have been surprised if they did have retina. Like that's a lot of pixels to put sure. in like, such a small area. And I'm sure it's going to come with time. I just didn't think it would be hitting now. So maybe like I guess my answer would be I was ready for it not to be there. Right. Um, I mean, I think for me it's it's you know it's the same resolution as the original iPad, but uh, on a smaller screen, so it's denser and will look better. Uh, and yeah, I, I, Sorry, go ahead. I think the I think the actual PPI is it's it's actually 162 PPI if my, if my math is correct, which is pretty close to what the original, I think the iPhone 3GS was. Um, and I've and I see a lot of people you know bring up concerns about you know are are fonts going to look good enough on 7.9 inch with a non Retina display? Um, is it going to be comfortable to read in iBooks things like that? Um, I read a lot of books actually on the original iPod um, Touch that was based off the same display as uh, the 3G 3GS, which was about 160 PPI. Yeah, and I it did was too. Actually, really, it was really comfortable. I mean, it was like it was a great reading experience actually, um, and I thought it was a better reading experience than when I went when I finally got the iPad, the um, the first iP iPad. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I don't know. I mean, you know, Retina display is also a product of distance from your face. We hold these iPads further away from our face. If uh, if this thing has a has a pixel density similar to 3GS and you're holding it further away, I don't think reading um, and uh, the resolution of fonts and and sort of the uh, the rendering quality of fonts is going to be that big of a concern. Yeah, I tend to agree. I feel like it's it's the the only challenge they might run into is if it's if you get somebody who currently owns a Retina iPad uh, and then gets one of these to supplement it or because they right. want one. Um, that I I might there might be a noticeable difference downward in that case, but I feel like. If I just handed you one and you started to use it, 
Uh, just like I still have my now three-year-old iPod Touch, uh, and it's still fine for reading on, but then I pick up the iPhone 5, and it's considerably better. And I feel like right. this is the same thing, where it's perfectly good enough, but there's definitely this better thing out there. Agreed. Right. Well, I, think, I also think that the, reading, the, the quality of a reading experience isn't just based on, the, obviously, the pixel density of the display. It's also a product of uh, the weight and uh, the ability to comfortably hold it in one hand, you know, which is also a product of the weight. And I've always found the, the, iPod, uh, the iPad, even iPad 3, um, it's too heavy to hold in one hand to read comfortably, um, which that's always been the biggest sort of deterring factor for me when I go in. And I think, okay, I want to read a book in Kindle. I go and I pick up my ebook, my uh, e-ink Kindle, because it just it doesn't weigh anything. It's so comfortable to hold in one hand for a long period of time. Um, you know, I, I think that's a huge factor, and I'm I'm really excited to see if the iPad Mini feels close or as good as the uh, the e-ink Kindles or the lighter Kindles uh, to for a reading experience. That to me actually is the bigger determining factor whether or not I'll read on it. Yeah. So actually, I'm I'm curious to hear what you think about this. What what else goes into uh, a really good reading experience on a device like this for you. You've, you've written uh, and talked a lot about designing good reading experiences, uh, and I'm looking at this one thing where you have the four different Kindle images here. Um, and, so, and, and I love my Kindle too, but I'm curious what you think about beyond just you know, Christmas of fonts and the weight of the thing. Like, What makes a really good reading experience? Because that seems to be what they're pitching on this device. Right, right. Well, you know, I mean, it's funny that their the one big feature was the, the scroll, in the introduction of sort of scrolling through books as opposed to paginating books. Um, I think that's fascinating. Uh, you know, I'm, I've never really been a, a, a huge fan of reading the Kindle uh, uh, chapters uh, paginated. I mean, you kind of get used to it, but if you notice when you read a lot of um, sort of scrollable text spaces, you kind of keep your eyes in that top third, top half of the screen. That's sort of or like the comfortable place to keep your eyes, and you kind of keep pushing the text up to that area. And so, you know, with these paginated uh, displays with sort of like in iBooks or within Kindles, you know, your, your eyes are constantly going all the way down and then like sort of rejiggering themselves back up to the top of the page. Um, in terms of keeping your location, keeping your place, pagination can kind of, uh, I think, work to your benefit in that case. But I think you can be smart about saving scrolling locations. And I also think that a lot of what we're reading on, um, on these devices outside of books, um, scrolling is actually, it's a, it's a really great way to, to, to read. Uh, not everything has to be paginated. Um, one thing that comes to mind, for example, uh, of a great recent app that kind of embraces scrolling uh, and also does a good job at packaging content is uh, actually Marco's uh, from Instapaper, his The Magazine. Um, I think it does a couple of things great that, uh, that contribute to a, a wonderful reading experience. One is that the way we read on digital devices is different than the way we read, obviously, physical, uh, physical books and physical magazines. And so um, by packaging what an issue is, by re-kind of jiggering the sense of, like, an issue isn't 30 articles, an issue isn't 15 articles, it isn't a 500 megabyte download. An issue is just four articles, really light articles, lightweight articles, and it comes only once every two weeks. I think the sense of being able to complete uh, sort of an issue or complete a book, complete a piece of reading, complete a piece of text is a hugely important part to the digital reading experience that um, we've kind of lost and that a lot of, a lot of these interfaces don't, don't sort of allow us to do. Feel like we've finished something, we've completed something. Um, but also, the, you know, the size of, those, of that content, breaking content up, uh, even larger book, breaking content up into maybe more digitally uh, um, native um, uh, indigenous sizes, I want to say. You know, there's a certain, I think, length of text that feels almost most comfortable for digital. And it's not the same length of text uh, that, we, that we tend to break things up in, in, into print. So um, I think apps that, that do that, that start to like, create these sort of boundaries around the size of the chunks of the digital uh, uh, content that we're reading, I think that, that actually is a super critical uh, part of, of making reading more enjoyable, more comfortable, and, uh, and sort of more satisfying. Uh, to readers than it has been uh, in most of the apps that we've seen up until now. Right. Uh, Craig, uh, we got to go, unfortunately, soon. Um, but I do want to ask you one other question. So we talk about iPad mini a lot. Uh, the other one thing I want to ask you about is kind of the new kind of Retina MacBook Pro. It's a 13-inch. Uh, more importantly, though, it's another Retina display that uh, web uh, producers have to actually worry about. We noticed this with the 15-inch Retina display that yeah. uh, a lot of websites just don't have the right image assets. Uh, your focus, obviously, is on text and words, but obviously there's an imagery issue, too, in page loading. 
Uh, what are your thoughts on having to basically redesign the web for a higher resolution display? Well, I'm excited about it for the text properties alone. Um, you know, I mean, the fact that uh, a lot of the data plans that we use, so if you have a, if you have a 4G uh, MIFI, MIFI, uh, you know, from Verizon, for example, the data caps are so high uh, in terms of cost per megabyte. Um, you know, four megabytes or, or, or gigabytes, four gigabytes or five gigabytes is something like 50 or $60 a month. Um, it's an incredibly high price. So I think there's going to have to be this sort of alignment between uh, cost of data and, before we're able to ratchet up all of the, the image assets uh, on the web to super high res, retina only image assets. Um, you know, I'm, it's not that big a concern for me to have high res, uh, retina, retina quality images just yet. Um, I, I think that the, the reading experience with the fonts, for now, is, is to me the thing that I'm focusing on that I'm, I'm most excited about. Awesome. Craig, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sorry we don't have more time. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, of course, Flipboard is amazing. Craig, anything you want to promote? I mean, really quick, we actually dragged you out to, uh, to talk about this. So uh, uh, anything else you want to say before you go? Uh, thank you for having me, and uh, I'll be on again soon. All right, awesome, Craig. Thank you so much. Thanks, Craig. Uh, before we move on, David, you have a, an apology. You I, to I do. I need to it's issue a correction. Just a humble, humble apology to all of our watchers and readers and fans. I just blew the Lion King thing horribly. <laughs> not only was it not Mufasa, it was <laughs> Rafiki who's holding up Simba. Mufasa had nothing to do with this. Holds him up, and he's just, and so we just. We, I just blew it, and I'm sorry. And I'm going to go home and watch The Lion King 445 times I think to get it right. It may be available now on Blu-ray. We get some gorgeous... I hope so. Maybe it's a 3D even. I don't know. If Netflix doesn't have it... Uh, AK 3D Lion King, please out. make it happen now. Uh, better than an apology, uh, we have hands-on video. Um, I'm hearing we have hands-on video. Billy, can we show that? One second. It's funny, because we get this, these nice little earpieces... And they can tell us what like what's ready. They're like, oh, hands-on's ready. Please cut to a hands-on. All right, we're going to do this. And they're like, all right, give us, give us five minutes. Yep. Not the Rafiki thing was going to go longer. <laughs> My Rafiki uh, apology was a quick one. Rafiki apology was supposed to go longer. Uh, so what I thought was interesting, we have, there's Josh, uh, we have a post on the site with a bunch of hands-on pictures. And I thought the, right. the first thing that really stuck out to me was Josh says, by comparison, the Nexus 7 and Fire HD feel like toys. Really? Which is a pretty aggressive thing to say and really kind of mirrors what, uh, Apple was talking about through this whole event, right? So Schiller gets up there and just like next to seven burn after next to seven burn. Right. He had the two screens up next to each other and just couldn't stop talking about why the iPad was better. Mm -hmm. um, and it's thinner and it's faster and all this stuff. And uh, I mean, to, to get it in your hand and say the next to seven and Fire HD feel like toys, like this is a perfectly good device. And we liked the build quality when we reviewed it. It's still good. And then to if it can be like a league beyond the Nexus 7, that's something pretty remarkable. Well, we're talking qualitative. We're trying to figure out like, sure. what he's really meaning. I will say the Nexus 7 is a very sturdy piece of material. If he's saying this feels like a toy, then I don't, I don't know. Like, is it like is it design? Is it structural? I, mean, I imagine there's a lot that's packed in that very thin frame. Absolutely. I mean, uh, and, and this, we've seen... Or this iPod like, Touch feels like a toy. Right, but then like with the iPhone 5, it's kind of right. this incredible piece of machinery. Uh, and, and if they've done that again, I'd be pretty excited. I would be. Um, Let's talk a little bit actually about the last event. So we got a few numbers. We'll kind of get into the details later. Yep. Uh, they announced the two new iPods, the iPod Touch, the yep. iPod Nano. These have sold $3 million, or $3 million, $3 million units. A lot more than $3 launch. million. A lot more. A lot more. Uh, whereas the iPhone 5 sold $5 million in the first weekend In the weekend first alone. weekend, yeah. So I, I, I mean, that's, that's $5 million in a weekend is, is a wild number. Right. And it's amazing that it keeps going up. Uh, okay, we have a hands-on video, but no sound, so Ross is going to narrate this hands-on video. I'm going to narrate this video. Mm, let's do it. Here mm. we go. iPad mini hands-on. Oh, look how thin it is. Okay, that's going to... This gonna, is the worst idea so ever. so fired right now. Uh, no, it looks super thin, though, I'll have to say. Um, looks good. It just looks like a smaller iPad, though. It really does. I mean, what, what else were we expecting? No, I mean, it, really it's thin. really insanely thin. Mm -hmm. uh, this is riveting if you're listening to this. I'm sorry. Uh, nice watch great. Josh is wearing. That is really good watch. Can we, can we go back to the watch? No, we can't go back. Oh, yes, we can. We went back to the watch and right at the... Oh. I'd say I was wondering about the 4-3 the aspect ratio. And, like, I'm a little nervous with this device uh, as something for watching movies and stuff because you already get the letterboxing if you're watching right. a movie on the iPad. And now if you get rid of, you know, 33% of the screen space, you're going to... The video suddenly becomes kind of small. And on this, which is 16.9, the Nexus 7, uh, it actually fills the whole screen. 
Uh, so I, I do wonder how video is going to look on a 4.3 right. screen that's considerably smaller. But, but the upside is it works better in every orientation for everything else. Don't you think that's the direction that Apple is going with, though? I mean, clearly the iPhone uh, itself just went to the 16 by 9. Yep. Very standard uh, aspect ratio. Uh, iPad mini, of course, I, I'm sure they didn't want to make another fragmentation, like another screen you have to develop for. Right. Um, so no surprise to me they kept the 4 by 3. I do not imagine it's going to be the same years down the line. I you don't think, like, you don't see, you see them going to 16.9 for tablets too? I, I wonder. I, I feel like at some point they're going to standardize that. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I mean, I think my, I would be shocked if they release the 9.7 inch iPad at 16.9. Because we've seen so many 10 right. inch 16.9 tablets that are fine in landscape and like ridiculously Absolutely. humongous in portrait where you hold it vertically. True. Uh, and so, but but this with seven inches, it makes a lot more sense to have it be a little taller. For the same reason that a sixteen nine phone makes sense to have it a little taller, and you can still use it right. functionally in portrait without it being like comically tipping over right. as you try to hold it. You know, um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a story. This is a story from when I first started, and this is why you should never, ever take anything I say about aspect ratio for like for anything. Don't take it for gospel. Okay, don't, don't take your opinion on this. Done. But I'm gonna tell you the story anyway. Uh, I was obsessed with the 21 by 9 aspect ratio of like what? this LG phone way back when. What? I oh, like, I remember was that Was it the phone. BL40 chocolate or something like that? Something like it that, It looks yeah. like a candy bar. I, <laughs> I liked the aspect ratio. I, I would put a candy bar in my pocket. Back in my fat young days, I had candy bars in my pocket. It felt natural. <laughs> so I want you to think about that. I want you to think about little somebody, fat Ross. Somebody tweet that at me so I can retweet what Ross just uh, said. Mop top. Uh, you, you can't tweet yourself. I'm just going to talk at you anyway. Okay. So just imagine, just picture it. Uh, Actually, wasn't that young. Well, well let's picture 13-inch Ross, bleach blonde hair, super fat, round, okay. carrying candy bars in his pocket, because he always needed a spare. Uh, sure. Uh, and then cut to uh, 20, early 20s Ross, okay. put it that way, uh, looking at this chocolate phone <laughs> and just like falling in love with that aspect ratio. And I like it. I do, but I know that's ridiculous. And then you tried to eat it, and you were like, I should probably get a phone. So when I say like I a want a 16 by 9 tablet, I really want a 21 by 9 everything. That's fair. I want the Vio that was really widescreen. Yeah, oh I gosh. want I think it's my ridiculous. phones, I want my tablets, I want everything like that. And then we can just roll it up in the future. It's the future. I hope that's the future. No, I don't hope that's I lied. I don't hope that's the future. Uh, no, but I am curious to see what happens with six I, like it would be really interesting now, especially if they come out and say, like, oh, we're changing the resolution and the right. aspect ratio. Because they did it with the iPhone. And I kind of thought everybody would freak out, but then it turns out all you do is just, you know, extend your I, display I don't, and it's I don't not think, a huge deal. Well, it, uh, I think it was the reverse. I think people were maybe were freaking out from the design aspect. Oh, God, I've got to put this more space on there. Right. Uh, consumers did not care either, though. No, They're absolutely like, not. like, whatever, have another row. No. I mean, I, I really, I think the only people who would have any issue with it whatsoever, I mean, most people are just going to buy whatever they're given and learn to deal with it. Right. Right. So, but developers, on the other hand, are like, oh, I have to completely recode my app. Um, and like they didn't, they ended up just extending it. And like we've seen a couple really right. cool apps that use the extra screen real estate. There's a, I think it's called DJ. It's a DJing app that actually right. like added a bar on the side. Um, okay, and now we're just going to show more versus the Nexus Seven here, <laughs> because this is just Schiller just pieces. burning the Nexus Seven great. over and over. And Billy's just telling me what's on screen here. This is great. Uh, and the thing I loved was. Um, and I actually want to talk about this because I think this is like the, the most interesting part about this. Right. Uh, was was the app comparisons he kept doing. Uh, here he's talking about you know there's a lot more screen space and uh, I, I never really thought it's, about it's how the much more argument again too. Right. Until he shows how like diagonally it's you know only mm -hmm. what nine tenths of an inch bigger, which doesn't sound like much, but then you look and it's like you get actually a lot more space. Um, but I think the thing that's going to happen now is we're going to realize how many how much better the iOS tablet ecosystem is than the Android tablet ecosystem. Like he was showing uh, Yelp and TripAdvisor and all these apps that, are, that have ones designed for uh, the tablet on iOS. And on Android, they're just blowing up phone apps. So they both exist. Like this is eBay. And there's an right. eBay app for both platforms, <laughs> right? But it just, it's a blown up phone app that was designed for like a four inch phone. And now it's just bigger and it works and it's fine. But then on the iPad, it's something designed to take real legitimate advantage of this well, screen. Okay, let's, let's, can we stop on the TripAdvisor thing? I think one of the issues also that's unfair is that, not even unfair, I think it's just an issue that Google has to figure out is differentiating a tablet app from a phone app. And clearly this TripAdvisor one was meant to be on a phone screen. 
Right, but that's, I mean, but, but Android and Andy Rubin has come out a bunch of different times and said, we don't believe that there are different phone, and they're kind of scaling back on that now. But right. They've, they've, their party line has always been, we think that you just build an Android app, and that's what it is, and it works everywhere. And it does indeed work everywhere, and that's great, but it just looks bad. It really uh, does. And, and increasingly, I think people are going to pick, like, you're going to go to Target, and you're going to see... Like, oh, I want to listen to music. And you're going to see Spotify on Android and Spotify on iOS. And it's, it's night and day. It really is. Uh, and I think that's, it's going to be way more obvious now that you have two relatively similarly sized devices with relatively similar you know, right. resolution and screen space and all that stuff. And it's going to, you're going to see how different the apps make the experience for the device. And that's why I think this is going to be huge immediately. It's the same resolution as the original iPad, so there's tons of apps mm -hmm. perfectly designed for it. Uh, it's, it has this huge, you know, hundreds of thousands of apps designed specifically for right. the iPad. And Android is just blowing up the Twitter apps so that all the text is tiny and the right. menus are humongous. I want to argue with this about this. I, I do want to argue about this more, and we will. Uh, but Can we first, talk about bezels? Is that what you want to talk about I some don't more? Want to talk about bezels. <laughs> Can we talk about the loop? No. Just, okay. I'm just that's, gonna swing that's this fair. around. We'll, we'll agree on the moratorium. Minutes, we just swing this around, guys. No it's more great, loop and no more bezels. entertainment. Uh, first, though, we have Andrew Allen on the line. Andrew Allen is a designer from Fifty Three. Uh, they made the paper app, uh, which we love. Ellis Hamburger, actually, our reporter, is in mad love with this app. Ellis Hamburger too. has not gotten any work done since paper came out. And he's on the made app store. every he just single one of us. He's made every single one of us buy it. And I gotta say, I love. Oh, it's amazing. I look. It looks good. It's like an Instagram for drawing because I look like I'm doing something worth it. <laughs> worth you know. Just minor elementary art. Pensive, you're like, oh, look at this thing I made. Yeah. So just imagine 13 year old Fat Ross sketching with a p uh, pencil. Now I can do it again. A lot of Fat with my Ross. It's, you know what? I have issues. I'm getting through them, and we're gonna let's, work through let's them. Let's get Andrew live on, on the air. Andrew, are you with us? I am. Nice to be here. Great. Uh, you can be my therapist. No, I'm kidding. Andrew, I want to talk to you about a few things. Um, we just had Craig Mod on. Craig Mod kind of talked to us about the uh, the output of the design, basically how to make you know apps that work for the smaller screen, that are crisp, they're clear. He loves Retina, of course. Uh, paper, obviously, is more input-focused. Uh, I'd love to talk to you what your thoughts of the new iPad mini. You guys were highlighted, first and foremost. Uh, the second thing, of course, though, is that it's, there's less to actually hit, and you've got to like, be a little more precise. What do you think about the 7.9-inch mini? Are there challenges that you're going to have to face now? New challenges, rather. Um, yeah, I mean, because, you know, drawing is very size-specific, you can't really scale it up and down that well. You know, the interaction just kind of fundamentally changes. Uh, but that said, you know, a lot of what uh, we're really excited about is just that increased mobility. You know, so having that, that smaller screen just means you can take it, you know, a few more places, pull it out, you know, uh, in a few more places and feel a little less awkward for pulling out your giant uh, iPad. Uh, and so we're all about, you know, trying to capture ideas sort of as they happen in the moment. And so, you know, something as, as simple as even just a smaller screen size can can make you a little bit more, uh, you, know, uh, you know, just make it a little bit easier to just whip out and sketch down an idea. But it definitely has some some challenges around ink and input, uh, especially of styluses. Um, They've already have had you know an issue with uh, you know styluses are just not that precise, um, and so you know it it definitely produces a little bit of of, an, of a challenge for us dealing with uh, drawing, but uh, you know it's we see it as kind of a positive trade off. So how much did uh, the higher resolution on the uh, newest iPad, the one before this, but the the, the third iPad. Yeah. Uh, how much did that kind of open up a possibility to do more and do better for you guys? I mean, it sounds like that was that was like the the big thing that really opened up this world of possibility to be more precise and more exact. Like, is it is that a problem here now with that it's um, less? I mean, now that it's back down to ten twenty four. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is a little. It'll be interesting to kind of see how that, you know, how people's work now kind of scales back down, um, and we do have some sort of technical challenges moving uh, from one device to another, that type of thing. But uh, you know, definitely, we launched with the iPad uh, three uh, back in March, and that increased resolution definitely brought like a whole new level of, of detail into sketching and drawing uh, that just wasn't there before. Andrew, I have. And I, so, oh, sorry, go on. 
no, no. Uh, Andrew, sorry to cut you off. I didn't mean to. Uh, I have a small question. Actually, this is more of a technical thing. You may be able to answer it. Uh, when you are uh, coding an iPad app, uh, Retina and non-Retina, can they be like wholly different experiences? Can you make? Can you say like this is a non-Retina version of the app? Let's make the icons bigger, or does it have to be like just similar assets? Um, the yeah, definitely the, the way to go is you produce you produce different assets for each, uh, but you name them in a in a certain way with that two X at the end, and so that you know the Retina ready version knows which one to pull. So the design pretty much has to be the same for both. Yeah, yeah, it has to be very similar. That's gonna be interesting though, because you'll see people like we know it to code for the smaller screen with a smaller iconography, but it still has to be the same general size. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, under this new rule, you have to you obviously have to make apps for the 7.inch mini, and you've got to make apps for the uh, much higher resolution uh, Retina iPads. Uh, do you see this as like a new limitation that's going to affect the third and fourth gen iPad users as well? Um, I don't think so. I mean, you know, we'll try and make it as, as, as sort of universal and as, as great as we can. Uh, across all the platforms. I mean, it is interesting, though, that, that from what I can tell, I haven't you know, seen it in person um, yet, but it looks like they've essentially scaled everything down. And so Apple used to have a guideline that was, you know, a touch target had to be a certain, a certain size. Right. Um, and so scaling that down now kind of scales down that, that touch target. And as far as I understand, they haven't increased the touch uh, sensing capacity at all. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how, how they've kind of adapted to that. Right. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. So everything from like, sorry, things like that. If everything just scales down, then, you know, targets just get smaller. Hmm. Right. Well, the one thing that unfortunately we cannot scale, this is actually, you know, it's a, a niche issue, I think, but it's something that's going to affect uh, 53 a lot more is uh, stylus. Yeah. Um, you know, we've been going through a lot of stylus roundups. Ellis uh, is crazy about them, and I thank him, which means I had to, you know, I got the right stylus, got the bamboo. Uh, Andrew, what do you use for a stylus, or do you actually finger paint? <laughs> I use whatever we have around the office here, honestly. We have every stylus under the sun. I believe here. you. So I've used bamboo, used cosmonaut. Yeah. Right. Do you have a favorite? <laughs> Um, you know, the bamboo is, I think it's a good all-around stylus, but, you know, still, there's still something to be desired in, a, in the stylus space, um, and so hopefully things can continue to yeah. get better there. So do you think that type of interaction is going to be as, you know, prevalent and useful on a 7-inch device? I feel like w with these smaller devices we've seen, it's kind of a different use case. It's more for reading and kind of holding in one hand and doing stuff. Do you see this as still something people will use a lot of for kind of these big canvassy drawings that people have done with paper? Yeah, I mean, it, it, we're really interested to see what people will actually start creating with the new, and, and what those, you know, how those creations might be different. Because yeah, it may be a little uh, trickier to do more sort of complicated drawings and illustrations, but honestly, that's never really been our focus. Uh, we've been more about just trying to capture ideas. Right. And uh, so, you know, we see it as a great place. It's almost like that, you know, like a memo pad that you hold in your hand. Because you can hold it with one hand, you can easily hold the styles in your hand. Right. Um, now, I want to actually talk about the app that we showed, um, or that Apple showed at the event. Uh, Ellis is actually, uh, he's pinging me on the computer. Uh, he will freak out if I don't ask you this. That was a new paper app, if I'm not, uh, it looks like, with a color picker. Uh, can you talk about that at all? Um, we are uh, in the works on a pending update to paper that, should, that will be coming very soon. Uh, can you talk about that at all, uh, from what we saw at least? Um, or how about this? Is it, is it a free update, or is it going to be another uh, little package we can kind of get uh, with the other like sets? We've obviously you, you, buy, you buy the pen and the paintbrush separate uh, now, for example. Uh, yeah, we'll be explaining more of those details when when it launches. Ah, fair enough. But it is just around color, uh, and it's, you know, it, when you think about color, color hasn't changed. You know, like the basic color controls really haven't changed for 40 years. And so we've really taken a lot of time and, uh, you know, dove really deep on color uh, and really came up with, you know, what we think is a very innovative new control for color. Well, it, what, it, well, you know, what we can see from the iconography, that, that looks 
exactly like what I wanted personally. I'm really excited to see it. Uh, you know, I wish you could tell us more, um, but I'm always going <laughs> to wish that. Uh, Ellis, too, I can hear him screaming and crying in the back. Yeah, Ellis freaked out when he saw it. Really, he did. could not wait. Um, <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's going it's to be awesome. We're really looking forward to it ourselves. Andrew, I got a question. Um, are any of these products things you've already pre ordered or you're going to pre order? Uh, are you going to pick up uh, a new iPad on day one? Definitely. Definitely. It's Perfect. our job, man. No, 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 no. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> You know what? That was that was probably the dumbest question. Yeah, I'm right. Uh, but uh, but for, for personal use, I mean, would you? What about the new MacBooks with the Retina display? Uh, we do have. I mean, we have like the the 15 inch ones. Um, so we're not super. You know, we don't need to get the 13 inch necessarily. But um, yeah, I mean, we you know we get the tools as we need them. Uh, but definitely the new iPads because that's the platform we develop. Where we have to get that day one. So for so we're out there in line, you know. Grand for, yeah. <laughs> for you personally, which which do you imagine? Which iPad do you imagine you'll use more? I imagine you're a pretty heavy paper user, or at least if you're not, you have to say right now that you are, or else you get in trouble. Um, he also just said he's been waiting in line. But, I have a hard time believing that. Yeah. He just featured his app. Yeah, that's true. But which which do you see yourself using more? The the bigger one or kind of the more portable, use in one hand and sketch one. You know, I'm not entirely sure yet. I'm one of these guys that has to try something out. Like, I, you know, I try everything out, and then if it sticks, I stick with it. Uh, but I am really curious to try it. I, I think it's going to be uh, a big product for Apple, and I think it's going to be big for a lot of developers too. I think it's really going to open up the, the app market even more. Uh, what about what about uh, Android and Windows 8? Yeah, obviously, you guys have been focused on uh, iOS devices. Uh, do you see uh, anything with uh, Android tablets? Obviously, Apple feels very strongly uh, in one sense that they're terrible, terrible devices. Uh, what does 53 think about those? About the devices? Uh, there are some good devices out there. I mean, the biggest uh, challenge for developers like us, especially for an application like ours that's very, uh, you know, it's very sort of size dependent, is all the different dimensions and orientations and you know, ratio, screen ratios, uh, that it becomes very tricky to, to scale, you know, from like a three by four ratio to some different ratio. Um, um, and so at least, you know, Apple with this mini has kind of maintained uh, the resolution of iPad 2, you know, with the same screen ratio. So we're, you know, we're really trying to focus on building out our ecosystem uh, on the iOS platform at this point. Um, but, you know, it's only a matter of time before you know, Android and Windows, and that become become more possibilities for us. Okay, so I want to just go back real quick to what you said a second ago about uh, you think it's going to expand the App Store kind of in new directions with this new device. Uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit? What do you see happening differently in the App Store or expanding uh, now that this new device and form factor is out? You know, I'm not. You know, it'd be probably ignorant of me to make some assumptions on that, but. You know, when you look at every kind of new uh, form factor, um, even if it's just kind of a slight size change, it tends to spur an entirely new class of applications that suit it. You know, like everyone kind of thought when the iPad first came out that it was essentially just a scaled up, you know, iPod Touch. Uh, and then people came out and did drastically different things with it. And so I'm really curious to see what, what types of content people people actually end up producing for them. Great. Um, Andrew, thank you so Great. much for joining us. Um, I'm going to let you go. I know you've had a busy day. Uh, congratulations on the mention. Uh, looking forward to the paper app and, you know, looking forward to hearing way more about it. Uh, again, thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, go get in line for the new iPad. Yeah, obviously you're getting in line for that. Please, please do that. All right, thanks. Oh, that was a quick cutoff. He just dropped the mic and get out. Right. You got to do it. Well, before we go on, I do want to thank uh, I do want to thank Andrew again. Uh, yes. Andrew's on Twitter at a s a l l e n. Obviously, obviously a s allen. That's easy enough. Uh, Craig Ma from earlier uh, designed uh, Flipboard. Uh, that is Craig Ma, C r a i g m o d. Uh, we got a lot more people in store. Uh, Neil and Josh will be joining us soon. I uh, got a bunch of Verge staffers to kind of talk through numbers and other impressions. I'm looking forward to that. Before we get into that, though, um, I. We have Nathan online. Before we get to Nathan, though, I do want to finish this one conversation. What do you think? 
uh, Note 2 Styli versus iPad Mini with a bamboo. See, so that was one of the things I actually thought was really interesting as he was talking about uh, using a stylus on a smaller device. And I think uh, one of the things we really didn't anticipate, or at least I didn't anticipate, uh, that helped the Note catch on uh, is that we're, we're really used to this idea of holding a thing in your hand and writing on it. Right. right, and having just a half decent digital surface to do that is great. Like I never really use a stylus on my iPad because it just feels kind of awkward to be, you know, it's I can't, so you can't big. really hold it in yeah. one hand, or if it's on your lap, it's kind of awkward to use. And on a table, I just end up using my Mac, and like, so it it didn't really work. But this idea of I've seen people, you know, it's great to be able to like stand in the grocery store in line and just write. Like, right, that's so, nice. And this to me seems uh, to fit a lot of that. And I think the. Uh, I forget one of one of the guys in the studio with us asked before. He's like, "What if it has a stylus?" And like, I, I kind of laughed. I thought it was ridiculous. But then, like, on a device like this, it almost makes sense, especially if you can get one uh, as with the Note that's so kind of deeply integrated with the hardware in the sense that, like, you know, you have levels of pressure sensitivity right. and all these different ways that you can make the input even better and more responsive and more tactile. Um, right. So it, it just seems like. That could be really cool, but I still feel like if all you want to do is hold it in one hand and write, the note still seems to be like the perfect size for that right. thing. So I think here, here's the problem. I think uh, the iPad 10 inch had uh, there's th there's three things I always want to make a stylus work. Uh, and you know we're always living the shadow of the courier. The flyer tried to. Oh, there's the a lot courier. of I don't want to. I'm gonna cry. You're gonna make me cry. I just okay. We're getting to it. So the three, to the three things I do want talk. from the stylus always okay. is uh, first I want. Uh, you know, I want to be able to hit with precision. That's a problem that iPad 10 inch has, and it's going to be even worse with the iPad mini. They're not going to yeah. shrink the stylus. They can't. It's a technology issue. That's what yeah. Digitizer does really well for Note. Yeah. Uh, two, I want to hold it in my hand. That is what the iPad mini is going to do very well. Uh, three, though, palm detection. Um, mm. And that's an issue. Like, I don't, you know, I write with my palm on the ground. I don't kind of hang my hand like this. This is just great. It's like the, like like the loop, yeah. Yeah, just like the loop. I just, I'm swinging things. I'm swinging my invisible loop right now. Um, and so those, you know, those are three things. Obviously, Apple fixed one with the iPad Mini. Yep. I don't know how well, because there's just less surface area to hit now. I'm not sure how well the the writing is going to be. I'm curious. I really want to I will to say work. though, like, I'm amazed at how good some people are with the iPad and a stylus. Like the stuff Ellis is able to do, I just end up drawing like big circles and like I draw a tree and it just looks like a big circle <laughs> and. Uh, but Ellis is out there, and he's like, "I'm going to draw Robert Scoble." Like, this is a true story. This happened. Yes. He's like, "I'm going to draw Robert Scoble," and like, got a picture and just drew Robert Scoble. And I was like, "Oh, look, that's it it's Robert Scoble." So good. There it is. Right. And so, like, people can, I guess, do these cool things. And it's uh, like Andrew was saying, you have this now more mobile platform that lets right. you kind of do it anywhere and easier, and you can just kind of like pull it out, and you don't have to set it down to draw on it. You can mm -hmm. just hold it and draw on it. Uh, that's pretty cool. Right. And and I feel like. I've seen so much good stuff I'll never be able to draw, but I can't draw on the note either, so I can't really complain. Right. So in a while, I do think it's a oh, Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to stop what I was going to say. One, because that was a gibberish sentence, and that's really Fair. bad for live broadcast. Number two, we have a hands-on video uh, live from San Jose. Well, not live. It was live at some point. Now it's uh, uh, a... <laughs> uh, hold on. I'm being told to hold. We're going to wait. I, so you're so just... Now you have to narrate and imagine... Pictures. So here's here's the thing. So and I I love Billy Death. We have these earpieces. I'm gonna show you right here. <laughs> uh, Billy's been telling me like directions, like you know, let's let's we got a hands-on coming up. Uh, please kill time. The first time I did not kill enough time. Mm. Uh, this time I one. thought I killed enough time. I could have sworn I did it. Uh, I blame myself. Uh, and I'm 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 out of fat jokes. Or not even fat jokes. Fat what? fat anecdotes. Somebody did post a great picture of it was thirteen a year old picture. Ross. Yeah, I, thirteen I'm year old really fat excited. Ross with candy bars in his pockets. Uh, technically, it's it's uh, slightly rotund, just kind of out of shape. Twenty-seven year old Ross, twenty-six year old. I know it's my own Ross. age. Let's just yeah. call it. It's fat Ross. It's fat. That's fine. It's, it was a picture fine. of me from today. Are you <laughs> oh, calling me fat? That's awkward now. That's, that's very that's awkward. Um, so also, oh. can I just say, you know, what would fix your palm rejection problem? What? A bigger bezel. I'm done. We can watch. We have this video now. We can Please, watch it. Please cut to the video. I don't want to hear this. Hey, this is Josh with The Verge, and we are looking at and holding the new iPad Mini. Uh, it is incredibly small. You can actually see as a comparison with the original iPad or the new iPad, uh, very big difference in size. This is obviously a more of a one-handed device for reading. Uh, for I'll, I'll be taking it to bed with me um, romantically. And uh, as you can see, it's extremely thin, 7.2. 
uh, millimeters, and uh, it's very light, 0.68. Pounds. The screen is a 7.9 inch, 1024 by 768 display, but at the smaller size, the resolution looks higher than, you know, if you look at an iPad 2 in comparison, this definitely looks a lot tighter as far as pixel density is concerned. Uh, it does feel incredibly light in the hand. Uh, this version that I'm holding has an LTE option, and as I mentioned in my write-up, the, the build quality of this is, you know, you expect from Apple great build quality, but in comparison to other 7-inch tablets on the market, it's night and day. Compared to something like the Nexus 7, this just feels like a really high-end uh, piece of technology. Um, you can see here speakers on the bottom, lightning connector, uh, and uh, it is exactly what you'd expect, a smaller uh, iPad. 329 is the starting price for 16 gig, uh, and it goes up from there depending on what uh, kind of storage and whether or not you're adding uh, wireless options, uh, cellular options. Uh, so that's a quick look at the Mini, and we'll have more information, more photos, and more video coming soon. Can I just say, Josh has the world's largest hands. That thing looks like <laughs> the thing looks like an iPod Touch as he's holding it. And he's like, look, I can crush it with my two fingers. Technically, when he did the iPod Touch, it looked like an iPod Nano. The iPod Nano right. looked like a shuffle. The iPod and Nano and the, and the iPod shuffle just doesn't got exist. Lost, just like right like in the folds of his fingers, um, yeah. There's something we haven't talked about too much, which is the price, which is numbers. Uh, and thank God our next guest, Nathan Ingram, is the person I make do all our number stuff. Uh, Nathan, are you with us? I am. Hello, Ross and David. How are you guys? Hello. Are we getting you audio only, or can we get the severed head of Nathan Ingram behind us? Oh, yes. beautiful. Oh, yeah. Hello. Looking good. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Pretty good. That's How are you doing? That's a very orange wall. That's right. It's bold. It's bold. Did you paint that wall like that? <laughs> yeah, I did. It was a pain, but it was worth it. Great. Uh, I'm sorry. It's obviously not what you're here to talk about. Um, <laughs> Nathan, I wanted to bring you on earlier. Obviously, we had um, awesome guests, and because, you know, you're one of us, I can make you wait long. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but I, okay. I do want to talk about some of the sales figures that Apple threw at the beginning. Tim Cook came on stage, and as Apple is wont to do, he yep. threw out a bunch of impressive numbers, some more impressive than others. Uh, Nathan, you want to break them down with us? Yeah, there was more numbers than I thought we would get. Um, the first one, I think probably the biggest one, is the 35 billion apps downloaded. Uh, pretty massive number, up Five billion just since June at WWDC. They announced thirty billion back in June. So uh, clearly, the app train is is rolling along without uh, any signs of slowing down. And going along with that, uh, Cook mentioned that they're up to two hundred seventy-five thousand iPad-specific apps, uh, which is good to know for this event. Obviously, with the iPad Mini being introduced, and that's up from two hundred seventy, excuse me, two hundred fifty thousand, and that was just a month ago. So they've had twenty-five thousand new iPad apps developed in the last month. So are these numbers uh, accelerating? Like, are, are the apps in the App Store growing at an even faster rate? Or are we kind of reaching a point where all the tablet apps have been made and maybe we won't get to, you know, 700,000 that have all been made for the iPad? Well, that is, a, I mean, that's a decent point, right? Do we really need, at some point, it's has to level off, right? Are we going to keep on getting, you know, millions and millions and millions of apps to the point where no one will ever be able to find them or use them? Uh, probably not. Slow down a bit. But um, it doesn't seem like it is yet. Again, just I'm surprised they had an update on iPad-specific apps uh, <laughs> since they just mentioned a month ago. Right. You know where they were at, and there was a so if they're up another twenty-five thousand in a month, that's a it's pretty good growth for them. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. So they, they said two hundred seventy-five thousand iPad apps. That's an increase of twenty-five thousand. iOS yep. apps in general, they said seven hundred thousand again. That's the same number they gave for the iPhone five event. Is that right? Is that right? So they didn't break down any new uh, granular data on total app count just not a the single app. new app well no, no, no wait wait, wait. It's, it's, it's ios in general so it's zero it's new in the apps. 700,000 range plus right. 25,000 doesn't make much of a difference apparently no i think it's zero you think it's zero <laughs> zero 25,000 so other wait. people left they were like no oh, these new ipad apps i'm out oh, they're, they're, no, that's exactly right you heard oh, it here this, first this is a this is an iphone only app i don't want that <laughs> exactly we're gonna, i'm we're done gonna, Let's pull in my app. Let's get out of here. Add a little plus thing. We'll stretch it. It looks great on Nexus when you do that. That's, yeah, there you go. Uh, no, I mean, we'll, we're, I'm going to argue about that with you <laughs> later. Um, uh, we also heard a little bit about software. Was it uh, 200 million iOS 6 devices? Is that correct? That have been updated? Yes, 200 million iOS 6 devices. And obviously, iOS 6 just launched. Um, but now we know that uh, people are upgrading at a pretty rapid rate despite the Maps issue. And what's worth noting here is that that's probably about half of their iOS installed base at this point. Because last we heard, there were over 400 million iOS dev devices out in the wild. So uh, we haven't gotten a new number uh, on that since June. Uh, but so now we say, you know, about half of the people out there are using 
iOS 6, despite all the incredibly bad publicity they've been getting for the Maps fiasco. You know, it's actually interesting. I, when I were kind of going through the prediction, uh, predictions of things they would talk about today, one I thought they would definitely bring up was uh, iOS Maps. They made a public apology, which is a huge deal for them. Yeah. Usually it's like an underhanded kind of, we're sorry, we're so great. Uh, we're, we're sorry, sorry we're you're not ready for us. Yeah. We're sorry you're not ready for us. We're sorry you hold things wrong. We're sorry we're giving right. you free cases. This time was, we're sorry we screwed up. Yeah. Um, and you know what? There were two things that I expected to see that did not. I expected something about iOS Maps saying it's better, we fixed the bridge. I mean, probably, yeah. they probably didn't want to show the bridge Neither in the first I was place. sure they were going to show a picture uh, of like the Hoover Dam not looking like a roller coaster. Right. Yeah. The other thing I expected to see, a um, little bit, although he's a software dude, Scott Forstall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although, although in fairness, that, that was probably not going to happen. Scott is obviously, he's the software dude. He comes out for iOS changes. There wasn't any today, which is why we also didn't see Eddie Q. Uh, it just wasn't his wheelhouse. Um, so it is, you know, it wasn't surprising to see him, but he has been someone who's like, the people have pointed to him in the, in the industry, the analysts, to say like, iOS maps, clearly it's under his watch. Um, but to get, you know, to stop making hypotheticals and conjectures and blowing things way out of proportion, which should not be. Uh, I am surprised Maps was not mentioned at all. Me too. Um, I would say they just probably didn't want to take the focus off of the news. Uh, they already made the apology, so why uh, bring it up again and shift attention away from all the new hardware? Fine, be it's the rational point. one. You know what? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care for this. I really, <laughs> I really don't care for your logic and your reasoning. I'm out. You're a cold, cold numbers man, Nathan. <laughs> Uh, right. but, but so oh. I, I want to talk about iBooks, Nathan, because I'm hoping yes. you have a better sense of this than we do. So they, they threw out a bunch of numbers. Uh, so yeah. tell, first of all, I guess, tell us what the numbers were and then tell us if they're meaningful at all. Sure. Uh, so for iBooks stats, uh, the, the main ones we heard was that there are 1.5 million books in the bookstore, uh, that there's been 400 million books downloaded since launch, uh, which, you know, that's a nice large number. Uh, but since the launch, that's going back to April of 2010 when the original iPad came out. So that's a good two and a half years at this point. So, you know, I don't think that we can say that this has been an unrivaled success or failure. I think it's an important part of their whole strategy, obviously, especially going forward with the mini, the iPad mini, uh, small device, probably better tailored for reading. So, you know, iBooks is not going anywhere. But it certainly doesn't appear to be a you know app store style hit or or even an iTunes uh, music store style hit. Um, it's important for them to have, uh, but you know what's the compelling reason to use it over uh, Kindle, for example, on the iPad? Right, you can use it uh, across so many other devices that aren't made by Apple. That I think a lot of people probably just go straight to uh, Amazon Store at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and well, I, I wonder. This just occurred to me. The when you get, you said it was four hundred million. Uh, iOS devices, right, Nathan? Yes. So that breaks down to you know one book per person, basically. Uh, yep. and, and and when you download I iBooks, so. don't they offer you a free copy of Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, no, I, don't, I don't know if that counts. Like I really, if they don't count that in the number, then fine. One book per person is is you know it's a number. Uh, and when whatever they've sold 400 million iOS devices, I doubt they're worried and, and about to, it. And to be clear, but, I mean there are 2,500 US classrooms. They are reading more than Winnie yeah, the Pooh. Sure. Well, you think Winnie the Pooh is a good book? It is a very good book. I'm saying. Uh, Fat Ross used to read it all the time. <laughs> Back to Fat Ross. God, it's a callback. I'm, I'm learning mm. these lazy comedy things. Uh, all right, no, Nathan, let's let's hear. Did we talk uh, hardware numbers yet? I don't know if we. I don't recall uh, that. Actually. There wasn't. A, well, so the big hardware number is 100 million iPads sold. Uh, and that's up from 85 million that were sold through June. So um, yes, clearly that's a big, big milestone for Apple. I think they said they hit 100 million about two weeks ago. Um, and then, of course, Cook likes to say that they've sold you know more iPads than the entire PC market sells computers through the rest of the history of time. Uh, that might be a bit of an exaggeration, but clearly, <laughs> uh, Cook likes to to lump the iPad in with um, you know, the rest of Apple's success and say that you know, this is where computers are going and this is selling far more than regular computers. All right. Uh, and, you know. yeah, Nathan, uh, all right, I'm going to let you go soon because you've got work to do or you know, obviously you're fired. Back to work. Uh, back to work, thank you. Yeah. That's, that's the, the phrase I was looking for. It's actually a nice way of putting it. I should have been nice. You're welcome. Uh, Nathan, quick question. This is obviously the first of many announcements we're going to have coming up soon. Uh, we're going to have to see, obviously, Microsoft's kind of pretty close to announcing all its stuff. Uh, there's a Google event that's going to show stuff. Uh, but for now, obviously, we know what Apple's holiday lineup looks like. 
Are, are you going to go ahead and just pre-order uh, an iPad mini or any of the new Macs? Is Nathan, I feel like you're super excited about the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Am I crazy? I am, but I, I really don't need a computer at this point and can't really justify it. But let me just say that I'm trying to uh, look through all of my possessions and see what I can sell so I can go out there and buy an iPad mini. <laughs> It's a good answer. I wonder, you think I can get $329 for my first gen iPad? In the exact same boat as you, and I'm yeah. not really going to hold my breath on that. No, one. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get like 20 bucks, and then they're going to like get it and turn it on and be right. like, I don't want this, and give me my 20 bucks back. Or they'll flip it on eBay and make more money. Yeah, that's probably true. All right, well, Nathan, thank you so much uh, for hanging out. Right. Now, what he said, get back to get work. Back to work. Thanks, guys. Later. Uh, so we do have a, a, a graphic. It's a graphic on TheVerge.com. I definitely recommend everyone go check it. It's a buy the numbers. Website. It's a great website. Uh, it could be better. It could look better on the Retina MacBook Pro. That's all I'm saying. could look better. You're such a jerk. Uh, <laughs> this is the comparison piece. It's actually a good place to jump off and start talking about. This is the iPad mini, Wi-Fi, the LT version, the Nexus 7, and then the Kindle Fire HD. These are, you know, these are some of the big uh, products we have to worry about now. Like this, is, this is the field, I guess. Uh, plus, there's the Nook as well. Um, and David, you've probably used more of these than I have. We both play with Fire HD. Yep. Uh, I don't own a, a Nexus 7. We have one playing around the office. Uh, you did I hands, bought one. Did you do hands-on with the new uh, with the Nook? With yes. The you did. So you're yes. you are definitely one product more of an expert than I am on this, at least. <laughs> Fair. Um, so when you're looking at the field now, do you feel like is it a seven-inch market or is it a tablet market that has seven inches and ten inches? Well, so what I think is really interesting is that seven inches is where. The competition is like there's there's really there's no competition at uh, you know the 9.7 to 10.1 inch range. It's just the iPad. Uh, there are tons of devices out there, but there are none that are even remotely competitive to the iPad in in quality and in you know quantity sold. Uh, but in seven inches, there are a bunch of really good devices. Like the right. Nexus Seven is is a good device. Josh just said you know the build quality is better on the iPad Mini. But then that doesn't change the fact that the Nexus 7 is a very good tablet. Right. Uh, this and is the, what? This is a Steve McQueen's glove right here? Right. I mean, I feel, I'm and feeling the, Steve McQueen's sweat It's great. Right now. I really like it's it. It's great. Yeah, it's comfy, and yeah. like, I feel like I could drop it, and it won't break, and it's you not try like it, it. No, I don't want to try it, it out. No. Last time I dropped my phone on, the camera, on, on video, do you want to drop your Nexus 7? That's true. No. This is just this a very symbolic fine. gesture. No, it's mine. Nobody, it's mine. Nobody can touch it. Uh, oh, and I'm going to drop then, John's uh, iPad. That's okay. That's fine. Go for it. That's fine. So, but we've also <laughs> seen uh, the Kindle Fire HD has its own issues and wants right. to show you 400 ads every two seconds. Um, and I accidentally bought something. I, I don't know. I haven't told Josh this, but he was logged into the Kindle Fire HD, and I accidentally bought a movie on the Kindle Fire HD in like the 45 seconds I was playing with it. I what, accidentally bought what, a movie. What movie? Uh, I don't remember. Because here's the thing. I want to say it was Battleship. It might have been Battleship. Here's 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 the thing. Uh, it's it's twofold. Not only did you is he out three dollars ninety nine cents. No, I bought it. It was like this oh. is like like twenty four ninety nine. Like I bought this movie. Okay. Not Thank only you, is he out twenty four ninety nine, <laughs> which is ridiculous. For I think it was twenty bucks. I think it was nineteen ninety nine. But the Amazon recommendation engine is completely oh, screwing it's done. him over now. It's done. Yeah, he's gonna get terrible overwrought action movies for the rest of his life. I hear you like Battleship. <laughs> you should try Battlefield Earth. Exactly. Uh, which. Is funny with riff tracks. They're <laughs> so good when you're not listening to the actual dialogue. Right. It's so good. Um, so, but anyway, yeah. so the, the Kindle Fire HD is pretty good. Uh, the, the Nook HDs, we haven't really had a chance to spend a ton of time with them yet, but right. they're, they're also good devices from as much as we've seen. And, uh, and there's real competition here. They're pushing each other forward. Barnes and Noble and Amazon have gotten a lot better really quick because they've, you know, because they're both competing for effectively the same people. Right, uh, and so they they've moved forward quickly, and then Google jumped in and kind of upended the whole market, and so everybody's having to push ahead with that. And now Apple's coming in and doing the same thing, uh, and so I think it it, it kind of seems like we've just conceded ten inch tablets to Apple, uh, and are now moving to smaller, more portable, uh, lighter, cheaper tablets as kind of where we go in the future. You know, I'd actually I would make the argument that. So it's, it's back to the app ecosystem issue that you talked about. Uh, you know, Android apps look terrible on a 10-inch screen, which is what we were seeing a lot yep. with the Galaxy Tab when it first, you know, when it first went to 10.1. Um, and it's hard to differentiate from the Google Play Store what is tablet-friendly and what is not. Even to this day, like you have the recommendations, but it's not everything. It's just like the best of the best, and you're hoping you get what's good. Sure. Um, so I think, um, so I think the problem there with that is. Plus my train here in the whisper of the producers. I'm very unprofessional at times. It happens. It happens all the time. I lost my train of thought. It's nice glasses, though. Thank you. Thank you. So, this is not helping. So anyway, so so I think what you're having is like the seven inch apps, 
you know, if you're an Android screen, you're already developing for 4.7 inch, 5 sure. inch. It looks decent on a 7 sure. inch. There's not a lot of evolution needs for a lot of the apps. Yeah, they're uh, not great, inch. but they're usable. Certainly. Right, sure. Whereas Apple's going the other way. We have great 10 inch apps, great things that look 10 inches, and then we can just shrink it to 7, it'll be right. about as good, which is the new challenge. They're taking the same market from a different direction. Although, I wonder what the new iPhone apps look like on it. That's an interesting point. Uh, and that was one of the things I thought uh, Andrew from 53, our terrific guest, was saying earlier, um, was that instead of, you know, it, it was a whole kind of different dynamic when we went from the iPad 2 to the new iPad where we have a different resolution, it's, it's much bigger, you have a lot more pixels to play with, and now all we're doing is taking that screen, or you're taking these apps which you designed for this right. much bigger, roomier screen and shrinking it, and you can't build a different app. Uh, right, and I, actually, just, I thought that was interesting. You can build an iPhone app and an iPad app. You, you don't get to build a 1024 by 768 and uh, I can't even remember, what is it, 2048 by, I don't know. Use your math. A lot of pixels. Multiply. I don't know, Math whatever. is a big deal. Um, it's the, the pixely one and the not as pixely and one. And you know, I'm challenging you, um, but I'm not doing the math myself. You, I, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> you, you, don't, uh, you don't get to build different ones. And, and right. it, it's one thing to make it bigger when you suddenly have more space to play with. Uh, but what he was saying about, like, now the touch targets are smaller. Right. And there's less space to play with, but you've already added all these elements that you want to have on the bigger iPad. I really do wonder how these things are going to scale back down. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the touch targets can't be changed based on if it's the resolution or non resolution or the, if it's the retina or non-retina. Like, right. what he was saying is, like, it's got to be the same code. You're just changing the assets. Right. And on the one hand, like, the, the iPad 2 has still been out there, so it's not totally forgotten. But it really right. does seem like every time an app on my iPad updates, it updates, you know, to take advantage of the retina resolution. And there are new elements and new features, and more stuff is brought onto the screen. Watch me. I'm about to make a transition. I'm really excited. Go. I'm just calling. I'm just going fourth wall meta. I'm about to this make a transition. This is like a segue like segue. It's funny you mentioned <laughs> the iPad 2, David. Go on. Because the third generation iPad just got discounted. So iPad 2 is going away. Bye bye. No surprise there. Uh, third generation iPad discounted refurbished model starting at $379. That is the new entry model. John's yeah. saying no, the iPad, iPad 2 is not going away. away. iPad 2 is staying around. iPad 4 is not going away. iPad 4 was just announced today. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, so I mean that Correction. makes sense because the well, okay, so heat will, what, we what's actually say, happening here? Stay on the air, so. What's actually happening here yeah. is is the the iPad, right? They stopped numbering the iPad. It's just the iPad. Uh, the iPad is now really? uh, is now you know it's being sold as is going forward, and all the ones that they've made and not sold, which I can't imagine are that many or refurbished ones, are now three hundred seventy nine dollars. So they're, they're just which is an insane deal, right? Uh, you can get a Retina iPad that was incredible up until like an hour ago when it stopped being the newest thing for $379, refurbished. You get it still. cheaper than the new iPad 2, which is apparently still going to be around. That, that, that's, it's going away. I mean, away. refurbished is refurbished. But it but has to be going away. No, it's not going away. The iPad 2 is not it's, going away. They put it on the screen. It's not going away. But it's, it's now cheaper to get a refurbished iPad 3. Yeah, but it's refurbished. It's, it's, I mean, it's, that's a meaningful refurbished thing. Refurbished like, is not that big of a deal. No, I, I totally agree. Every time somebody buys, like every time some family right. member comes to me and is like, oh, I want to buy a Mac, I'm like, get a refurbished one. Right. Because it's still, it's, you know, it's 95% as good as new, if and not more. And it's just, I think people like this feeling that like I have a new thing nobody's ever touched. Yeah, but it's been touched for two years. Context. Uh, <laughs> Here's the thing. You got to go on. And, nope. Not going to touch Are you like Josh, where he's sexually aroused by every device that he touches? I was trying to say sexual. Can today. somebody make a supercut of Josh being sexually aroused by gadgets? Like, uh, please do that. I will write a post about it on The Verge, and then I'll get fired. I'll set my alarm fired. right now. Please do that. Siri, please. All no. the times Josh has been sexually aroused, he did it on The Verge. He did it just now with the iPad. He's done it with everything. Just please make the one, two and a half hour long video of Josh being sexually aroused by gadgets. I'm done. Thank you. My call to the universe is now is now complete, and I have a job for like eight more minutes. It's gonna be maybe great. seven. Yeah, seven yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, so no, um, but I do think it's ridiculous. You have a three hundred twenty nine dollar iPad Mini with the same resolution. It's the hot new thing. They really want to promote it. You've got the five hundred dollar fourth generation Retina iPad. There's really no room in between. But uh, you know, and whatever. Maybe we're wrong. We'll see. I think the iPad Two is going away pretty soon. It's been out there for a while. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they've they've done a good job of. Uh, like keeping the lifespan of these things long, and for that for Apple, they get to say, 
you know, our year old product is still a good product uh, right. in the sense that like they, they love to do this and That's talk true. about like how the Android phone of today is a piece of junk and outdated and forgotten tomorrow. They and love talking about that. And where, where you, when you can have the iPad 2, which is now, you know, it, what is it, 20 months old, uh, that's a nice thing to still have on your mm. shelves and be like, hey, this is still a pretty good thing. You should look at it. And well, okay, so let's let's be clear though. So, and I'm gonna basically hurt myself in saying this, defending your point. <laughs> the uh, the old iPod Touch is still around because it's the cheaper model. It still fills that little gap. Yeah. Uh, the MacBooks are still around, even though technically the Retina is so much better. Uh, but it does have the disk drive. iMacs, I don't know if they're around or not. Someone's gonna yell at me in a second to tell me. I hope. Any second now. But we're going to talk about Max right now. Anyway, we have Scott Lowe on the line. Scott Lowe is one of our senior West Coast editors. Scott, are you with us? Yes. Can you hear me? I can Hello. hear you. You also have kind of an orange background, although I blame the camera more than I do Nathan's paint job. Well, I'm broadcasting from the most important room in my house, the kitchen. It's so a really big looking welcome. kitchen. I, I think it's a West Coast thing. Like, Dude, it's just not New York. If you I, don't you live know, in New York, you have more than like this much room to live in. podcast room, by the way, this corner that you can see on the camera uh, is bigger than my kitchen. Oh, it's bigger than my apartment. It's fine. It's really not insane. Uh, see, what you can't see is my bed is in the corner because there is no other room in this, uh, this house. <laughs> so this it's it. just all kitchen. You just right. have yeah. a kitchen and a bed. Yeah. That's I like why I that. said it was the most important room in the house. Nah, it's a I good actually, move. do you think I would do that? I would get a studio that was just like a giant open kitchen and a Murphy bed. That's not bad. I would, I would love that. <laughs> and what else am I doing? I'm home, I'm playing Xbox, I'm sleeping, I'm That's eating. That's fair. Done. I do not need anything in between. All right, so Ross is going apartment hunting. Scott, <laughs> tell, us, tell us about new Max. Uh, yeah, so the, it was the first real substantial, um, you know, refresh to... Two of, you know, the, or actually the iMac is probably the biggest refresh, obviously. The 13, 13 inch MacBook Pro with Retina display to a lesser degree, but still pretty substantial. Um, and then uh, to a much more minor degree, the Mac Mini, which uh, got a very, very small, brief uh, discussion during the, the presentation. So let's, let's start with the iMac. Uh, what's, yeah. what's new and why, what was the story here? So it's been a it's been quite a long time since the iMac got a you know substantial redesign. They've been rocking the same chassis for for quite some time, and now it's it's very similar looking in terms of general aesthetic, but it is you know substantially thinner and um, you know obviously lighter. But that doesn't really um, come into play for a desktop. But uh, yeah, it is it is ridiculously it's the same screen. Uh, arrangements or you know uh, models rather the you know 21.5 and then the 27 inch model um but it's it's stunningly thin i mean i think they dropped the uh the overall thickness considerably down to just you know i think uh five millimeters is, is the at its thinnest point yeah it was on the edge it was five millimeters and and josh was saying i remember in the live blog like as he was spinning it around on stage people were like ooing and eyeing which is kind of wild for a desktop computer yeah, it, it, people don't get excited about these things often, but uh, you know, pretty considerable. And the other interesting thing is, is, is you like they didn't really show it that that well. But if you look in the back, the 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 edge kind of almost sort of looks like, or the back kind of looks like a an old CRT where it kind of gets like larger at at the point uh, nice. where it actually mounts. So it's it's kind of kind of looks like it's got a projection uh, display, but obviously it doesn't. They've actually um, you know as part of their effort to slim this down, they've done some really cool engineering things. They you know, they laminated the actual display to the glass, you know, to, to kind of remove the distance there uh, and, and make this thing as thin as possible. So what, what's your sense? Like, they, they talked a lot about the display with the Schiller. It felt like he spent the whole time talking about the display and then spent two seconds talking about everything else. Um, all this technology and stuff that they're talking about, you know, laminating the display and it's thinner and stuff. What does that mean for the actual display? Like, do, do you believe that this is really going to be a great, better, meaningfully different display? Or is it just a thinner thing that's the same? It's, it's still not quite on retina quality um, in terms of the pixel density. It's, it, they're still rocking very similar displays, if not actually, I think, the, the exact same uh, you know, kind of resolution quality. Um, but I think the, one of the more like, lesser known or lesser discussed features that I think was really valuable that I, I think they kind of glossed over is, is what a substantial powerhouse the, they've made this machine by comparison. I mean, the Mac Pro has been a, you know, a, you know, a, a sour point for a lot of pro-level uh, you know, users. 
Obviously, this can't quite replace that in terms of the upgradability and, and, the, and the ability to swap out, but they've got some impressive stuff. I mean, it supports up to, or at least the 27-inch model, supports up to 32 gigs of RAM, which is absurd for like a consumer level product, level product, but you can you know customize that up. So if someone were to want to use this for like a more pro application, it's you know not great. It's not as you know as ideal as, as something that's upgradable, but it's actually pretty functional. Billy, can we stop on that frame? Can we go back to that frame? Uh, you mentioned consumer. I think it's interesting, and this is the part I want to talk about right here. Headphone, yeah. SD card slot, four USB 3.0s. God, that was cool to watch and fast forward. Uh, two Thunderbolt ports, gigabit Ethernet. Uh, Scott, obviously there's one thing big missing here. It's the Firewire. Uh, that's gone. Obviously, it's yeah. not in the Mac Mini. Um, Mac Pro, is that the only thing left that does Firewire? Or is it... Mac Mini still has Firewire, is that right? Yeah, it's okay, just Mac the Mac Mini, Mini and the Mac Pro now. Really? Yeah. So it's the, the in-betweener, the, yeah. the, what they call their flagship uh, desktop. Yeah. Firewire is gone. That's, they're killing it off again. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's all about a new Thunderbolt uh, future, so. <laughs> yeah. And USB 3.0. Um, but obviously the optical drive is missing, which, you know, could be a sticking point for some consumers. But, I mean, with all those connectivity options, and since it is a desktop, um, you know, external drives are, are really there for anybody who really needs one. Though I, I honestly can't remember the last time I used a slot-loading disk drive, or any disk drive, rather. Yeah, me neither. So one of the things, speaking of drives, uh, one of the things they talked a bunch about was the, the Fusion drive, which sounds kind of cool. So tell me about that. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's actually a standard practice, uh, or you know, a common technology at this point. It's it's you know, hybrid HD, uh, you know, s you know, standard hard drive and uh, solid state, which is a common practice with uh, you know, PC manufacturing at this point. But uh, Apple's gone ahead and relabeled it and 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 called it their own, uh, and and made it a marketable feature. As they do, uh, <laughs> as as they've been known to do. Uh, <laughs> so it's, you know, it's. I think for, again, this is kind of falling into that, you know, realm of trying to angle it as more of a prosumer kind of level device where they can actually, you know, get some decent performance uh, elements out of it. You know, they're claiming that it, you know, does, you know, considerably faster, you know, um, data transfer and that, you know, people can take advantage of the massive uh, drive capacity. But, um, you know, for anybody who's really reliant on such a thing, like, they've known about it and have probably been using it for quite some time, though obviously this is the first time we've seen it in a Mac. But did it have a really pretty icon before? It didn't. It's a there, very, there you go. Yeah. There, is, there it is. Icon. I mean, the, the, the name is pretty cool. Fusion, dri Fusion Drive. It just yeah, that's sounds, pretty good. That's really good. It's on your tongue. Yeah, I just know that it, it, it came up uh, during the event, and Evan Rogers, one of our writers, uh, during the, the whole thing, it comes up, and they're talking about it, and everybody's all excited. And Evan just goes, yeah, I did that. <laughs> I made one of those. And I was like, all right. No oh, big deal. Good job. That's cool. Yeah. He, Which is he obviously should, I told him he, should, right he should sue Apple. Yeah. I think he, yeah. he made it first. Yeah. Uh, but so let's, you mentioned uh, the Mac Pro. Uh, and, and there were a couple of things here that made me think that anyone who uses or wants a Mac Pro is going to be really sad. Uh, this stuff, like with the, uh, the Fusion Drive, where you said they're kind of trying to make it a little more professional. Uh, and then they called it the flagship desktop. Like, it's not. It's not their best desktop. Their best desktop is the Mac Pro. Uh, but are they just pretending this thing doesn't exist and hoping it someday it goes away? I mean, if you think about it, you know, for 98% you know, or whatever it is of their consumer, of their, of their target audience, you know, the number of people picking up uh, Mac Pros is, is, is probably considerably low. Um, so it's, 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 you know, it's a market for them that's probably not too profitable anymore. I think, you know, a lot of the, I mean, especially with the, ver the burns that they, you know, did to the video production audience with, you know, Final Cut 10 and, you know, some of the problems that arise there and how a lot of people turn to other solutions. I feel like it's, it's a market they've, you know, pretty consistently turned away from and, um, aren't really looking back towards. And, and, you know, they didn't really announce anything regarding Mac Pro and, and I wouldn't be surprised if it, you know, makes a, a quiet exit. Gentlemen of short-term memory, allow me to direct your attention uh, to a Sean Hollister article from June 11, 2012. I don't know why I remember this, but thank God I've done nothing but work for the rest of my, for <laughs> my entirety of life. Sounds right. Uh, Macworld and Forbes had talked back in June to Apple CEO Tim Cook, who himself said, quote, although we didn't have a chance to talk about a new Mac Pro at today's event, this is obviously not today's, but like Ju uh, June, July, yeah. don't worry, as we are working on something really great for later next year. So MacBook, uh, Mac Pro... Uh, the official statement from months and months ago is that we will expect something in 2013. Yeah. 
They're going to come out and be like, oh, uh, it's actually just an iMac that's really good now, so you don't need a Mac Pro. Yeah. Bye. So, also, Firewire is gone. Yeah. And USB 4.0 is going to be big. Right. Like it is Bluetooth, guys. Bluetooth, Bluetooth 6.1. Yeah. Game Plus changer. EDR. EDR. I think what disappointed me the most was actually the MacBook uh, Pro with Retina display, the 13 inch. Um, disappointed. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was literally credit card in hand ready to order this thing as soon as the thing en ended because I've been in, in need of a new personal machine. And the the announcement that it only has discrete graphics really burned me because right. um so what does know, that mean just back up real quick for people who don't know what, is, what does that mean okay so um unlike the 15 inch macbook pro with retina display which has you know integrated intel cpu and a dedicated nvidia gpu um which you know obviously handles the load of outputting to the display um you know in you know cooperation with the thunderbolt port output to um you know, external displays, which up to can do up to four, uh, the 13-inch Pro uh, with Retina display doesn't have an, a dedicated graphics processor. It has one built into the CPU, an Intel uh, HD 4000, I think, which is you know not unlike uh, or may even be the same as the MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. So it's it's not a ton of graphics power for a machine like that. And as you know. A, a crazy gamer who likes to boot camp uh, Mac machines to to play, um, you know, things like actually like Battlefield and stuff on on a MacBook Pro when I can, um, you know, that you know not being able to do that is is obviously for a personal use case kind of a problem. But you know, I'm actually concerned about how the thing performs with the integrated graphics for just basic applications for HD video. Um, you know, especially if you're running a second display and. Um, you know, I, I'm really kind of curious. Uh, uh, by all indications, from the hands-on posts we've seen from Neilai and, and Josh, it's you know, it handles itself pretty well. But obviously, in those environments, there's not a lot of opportunity to actually really stress test these things. So, right. and so there's there's one point that uh, in, I'm sure someone on the Twitterverse, um, the Facebooks, the Don't social networks, the internet, the internet, uh, sure. that will correct me. But I was uh, real quick. I was running through some of the pricing differences. So when we did the MacBook Pro Retina 15 interview, I thought something that was important to mention was that if you get the same specs. Uh, for the MacBook Pro, the one that has the disk drive and not the Retina display, yep. it was cheaper to get the Retina model. I thought that was very interesting. I assumed that was going to be the same thing here. Uh, I was running through the numbers here. I don't think that's the case. I think uh, whereas the 15-inch Retina is cheaper uh, by $200 in the similar spec Pro, uh, this 13-inch Retina is $200 more. So cor uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So the MacBook Pro with Retina display starts at $1699. It's got 2.5 gigahertz Core i5, 128 gig storage, 8 gigs of RAM. Is that right? That, yeah, as far as I know, from yeah. what I've seen, yeah, that's, it's, you know, I which believe, is, oh, sorry, go on. you know, which isn't a, a huge price differential between, you know, the, the entry level 15 inch. And, um, you know, I think that's, it's, you know, it's a really weird place to come in on. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of value in it. That's, you know, super high resolution display. You know, it's, a, you know, the, obviously the industrial design and obviously the premium for the software. But I think it is, is, is kind of a weird place to kind of put, position it. Especially with the remaining MacBook Pros and um, you know just the slight hike up to the uh, you know the the 15 inch model. Right. I mean, and, and obviously it's not quite. I, I don't think slight is probably the best word to use, but it's you know not enough for me to think, man, I need to get the 13 inch over the 15. Right. And I, I would say the similarly spec MacBook Pro non Retina, uh, 8 gigs uh, RAM, 28, 128 gigs flash storage or solid stage storage, 2.5 gigahertz Core i5, uh, is 14.99. It's actually 200 dollars cheaper. Mm -hmm. So it's the inverse of what we saw with the 15 inch model. So whereas I thought the 15 inch retina was a clear sign that they were getting rid of the non-retina laptops because it's just a smarter deal to get. Uh, it's not the case with the 13 inch. I think they're being a little more conservative with the price, which I was kind of surprised about, to be honest. I feel like Apple just seems to think, uh, and I'm curious what you think about this too, Scott, that Apple seems to think that by the time, you're, you, by the time you hit a certain threshold, which is you know $1,000 or $1,200, right. Uh, the, these jumps just don't matter. And I feel like Apple's almost trying to game that in the sense that if they can say, like, oh, this is, you know, this is $14.99, but here's this extra great feature. It's only $200 more. Like, that's how they get your $200 from you is by doing right. that and, and, say, and making people say exactly what you just said. And then there's a small jump to the 15, and then, you know, you jump to the retina, and all of a sudden, like, oh, I spent $2,400 making totally rational decisions going up slightly in price every price time. Price creep is a... Beautiful, wonderful thing. And Apple's so good They're at really it. Really good. Yeah. Uh, but I will say this, and you know, I'm really excited about the 13 inch uh, Retina uh, for the for the weight alone. I mean, it does not have great graphics. Fun, but I'm using a MacBook Air. Three and a half pounds is is a three nice and a half number. pounds. This is like 2.98 right now. Uh, 13 inch Air. It's 
such a minor difference. There is enough horsepower, I would say, that justifies it. Maybe. Uh, actually, Scott, I want your opinion on that. Uh, your, this MacBook Pro Retina display is outputting four times the pixels at any given moment. Um, does it have enough of a spec boost to justify versus even the performance of an Air? Well, so I, I, you know, I made that claim earlier about it being the same integrated uh, graphics processing as the Air, and, and I just double checked. It is absolutely the same chip. So it's, you know, uh, obviously a you know, faster processor, but the the graphics portion is is exactly the same. So yeah, you're you're pumping out tremendous amount of um, you know pickles uh, pixels by <laughs> pickles pickles um, pumping out pickles. The Scott <laughs> Lowe story. How many uh, how many pickles could pump out a pixel resin display, <laughs> Scott? That's a question for NVIDIA, but... Uh, um, <laughs> Fine, stay uh, on topic, see if I care. So, you know, like, I mean, like, it's, you know, if you're looking at the same, you know, chip pumping out that many more pixels, you are going to run into performance problems. Obviously, you know, this is, you know, uh, aimed towards more kind of power-hungry users, but in, in the end, they're really not getting much more. I mean, obviously, the, the, pro the CPU picks up a lot of the, you know, multitasking problems and and whatnot, but when you get into the issue of like video and photo editing, um, depending on the scale and, and you know complexity of what you're doing, like I feel like we may encounter some hiccups. But again, like this is you know who knows um, you know, but that's just you know surface level. So who knows what the actual stress testing of like a final review will you know tell us? But I feel like um, this is a, a huge problem, and I was actually really really surprised to see that happen. Like to see them go with uh, integrated graphics only. I was hoping that I would like log on to Apple.com and see. Uh, an option to upgrade or at least a, a higher end version, but uh, yeah, it's, it's all integrated. So you still need a machine. What are you going to buy? Uh, I think I'm going to hold out, or maybe even consider the 15. Um, I, I generally prefer something a little more portable, but um, you know, in this case, it, it might be worth it to, to or or just wait rather. You know, I obviously uh, got my beautiful uh, work issued Air, so I can just rock that for a while. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, Not bad. Yeah, uh, and then. Uh, Again, kind of like the footnote of the entire Mac portion was the Mini, which also um, lost dedicated graphics processing. Like they they had an AMD chipset last year um, in, an, in a higher end model. Now it's just it's the exact same graphics processor as the um, as the the MacBook Pro with Retina display and the Air at this point, the Intel HD Graphics 4000. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I, I want to go back to the question. I love ending on the whole "What are you going to buy?" question, but I don't want it to limit to just Apple. I mean, so Scott, it's a bad timing. Obviously, we've got Windows 8 about to come out, um, and clearly you're not going to use Android for your work machine, but I still want to ask you that. Anyway, um, this is what Apple has. Um, it's, what Apple, you know, it's what we'll see from Apple for a few months. There'll probably be at least February, March before you see something else kind of come up in sure. your rumor mills. Um, are you happy with this? I mean, are you tempted to switch? We've got a new Windows 8 coming out pretty soon, uh, possibly a new for Android 4.2. I, I've spoken about it before, and I and and this is the first time in a long time I felt really excited about uh, a Windows platform. And Windows 8 looks pretty exciting to me. Um, you know, maybe not as primary machine because I'm just too used to the Mac workflow at this point for you know both like you know personal and um, you know work use. But um, you know, it's a pretty compelling offering. I think the you know the cross platform support uh, and and a lot of the integration with Xbox. Um, you know, again as a huge gamer, that kind of appeals to me. And, and overall, I think the experience looks great. I, I've always loved the tile design of Windows Phone. Um, I'm you know glad they're bringing it to, to the Windows platform, and um, you know I'm interested in checking it out. Obviously, you know I haven't had a whole lot of time um, because uh, you know obviously other reviewers are checking out. Uh, you know Tom, you know did the Windows 8 review, and there's other stuff in the wings. So uh, you know curious to see how it goes. But uh, you know for now, um, I think I'm just gonna stick it out, or maybe you know shell out the cash for the 15 inch. Sounds good. Scott, thank you so much. Uh, bleh, I can't talk. We've been, so, it's, like we've been do, it's like we've been doing this for like hours. <laughs> Scott, thank you so much for coming on to talk, what and thank said. you for knowing things about graphics and computers. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. You know, I realize we've done a great job with like this this whole gig where we don't know any numbers and we just bring in people. Oh no, that this have, like, is numbers like and opinions. This is the thing I've learned in life. This is like David's life lesson: is just hang out with people much smarter than you and don't ever say anything. Like that's it's great. It works really well. But doesn't that render your own job useless? Yes, but shh. I mean, I'm already fired because I begged for like the the gadget sex tape of. Josh but don't, don't you realize? Don't you realize what we've been doing here? We've been saying we're going to announce facts, but they're going to give us the real facts. They're going to the tell us staffers. things. Right. Then we're going to cut to people who are much smarter than us to give an opinion, and they're going to give the opinion. We're literally just we're a node mm -hmm. to people. This, I have no problem with that. We're airheaded bobblehead figure, right. and I don't even work as a bobblehead like this. 
I mean, all we, we're Nothing. not in California. That's the one thing you and I have going for us right now. We're that not in true. California. So it's pretty we good weather out there. Yeah. Um, so, okay, but yeah. real quick, we, we, I believe, have Josh and Neelai shortly, but I want to know before we get to them, yes. did he change your mind? Because I was like... You know, it's, it's not him that changed my mind, although I, I got... Ooh, let me change that. He did change my mind about one thing. He being Scott, by the way. He being Scott. Yeah. Uh, cameraman. Uh, he changed my mind in that it's just, you know, it's the graphics thing really kind of bothered me. The price bothers me more. Hmm. When, I, when I saw the 15 inch retina and I was like, oh my God, it's a much better deal, then I am super excited. Uh, now I have to decide, is the retina screen worth a $200 bump? I don't care about the drive, that's fine. Um, and the bump isn't, you know, well, we can actually talk about it. It's, it's the air that I care about more, and air is so much cheaper. Right. Uh, the portability is what I care about. Do I want to put an extra mini hundred dollars to get the retina display, even though the, the weight's not too bad? Not so much anymore. Mm -hmm. Not when the specs are really not that much different. Well, and that, to me, is, is kind of what could be really exciting, is that, that this exists means that there's basically nothing preventing us from having a Retina Air, right? Because it, it apparently, uh, this is assuming it's a good product that works well. We don't need uh, expensive and large discrete graphics cards right. to get this to work. Uh, we don't even need particularly you know, impressive specs. The only thing I'd be worried about uh, would be battery, just pumping out all the pixels. You're, you're worried about the battery. I'm worried about performance. I question the performance of the 13-inch well, Retina. That's what I'm saying. If it, if it works then we can't be that far away from having a retina right. screen on something as small and light as this. But then like, here, that's here, pretty here's what's going to like, upset me, though. Uh, does the performance of the retina 13-inch, uh, how is it compared to this? It's plugging out one-fourth as many pixels any given moment. It's the specs are the same. Shouldn't this perform better? Which is the weird kind of paradox of all It's an this. interesting point. So that, that's, and would be that kind of depressing because this, this, this sucks like half the time. Yeah, it's fine. iPhoto just ruins my computer. No, that's true. I went in, I was, taking, I was taking pictures for a review I did today of, the, of an Asus Windows 8 tablet, uh, putting photos in, and I literally hit import and then just had to walk away from my computer for like 15 minutes while I imported the pictures because I just can't do anything on it. Right. And that was why they started announcing stuff, and I was like, oh, $1,300 for an iMac. Maybe I should just get one of those. And I was like, oh, wait. I don't have thirteen hundred dollars. So you think we've been iMac. dreaming about the thirteen inch? IMac. We've been dreaming about this thirteen inch MacBook Pro with Retina for a long time. Yeah, like we've all wanted. It's like, oh, fifteen inches out. As soon as the fifteen inch came out, everybody's like, oh, I just want the thirteen. But here's here's the reality: is that if the specs are the same as the Air, this may perform better. This Air right here. Yeah. Um, and the price is so much worse. Like this reality is not the dream I had, um, or any of us had. Probably. Life has killed the dream. Life has I killed dreamed. the dream. Ooh. Yeah. That's Anne Hathaway. That's not Anne Hathaway. It's Lim is, but it's Anne Hathaway. <laughs> Coined by <laughs> Anne Hathaway. Boom. That that was that was great. That was musical. Beautiful. I yeah. am looking forward to Lim is Rob. That's, That's not what we're supposed awesome. to be talking about, but I do want to talk it's about it for amazing. a minute. John's excited too. John's smiling at me from yeah, behind the camera. Yeah, John Marcino, He's uh he's actually in the room behind the cameras with us, just smiling. So you know what I actually think is is cool and Lamez. always gets kind of underrated coming Russell out Crow of these and things. Lamez. Yes. Okay. That is I'm done. That's what I was gonna say. Thank you everyone. No, Good night. Uh, don't, the, don't cut it off. Just the yet. the Mac Mini. Yes. Uh, they never they don't care about this device, but like I actually think it's a really awesome idea. Uh, and everybody talks about like oh I want Apple to build a TV. It's like just buy a Mac Mini and then you have an Apple made TV. It has right. Mac OS. Like it has it, it runs Mountain Lion and has Thunderbolt, and like, what else do you want? It's an Apple TV, it's $599, and it's also a computer. Like, why is that not the best thing in the world? Right, oh, let's go. we got some video, we can watch this and um, just narrate over it. I mean, okay, so first off, the design has not changed no, in not years. No, but I mean, it's a, it's a hockey puck. Like, what I think is gonna be awesome is it's a big, fat hockey puck, but what I think is gonna be cool is when they can fit it in like an Apple TV-sized box, and I bet right. that'll happen eventually. I'm sure, but like, what do you call it, the Mac Mini Air? I mean, yes. what, what, what does the Apple TV look the like Mac at that point? Mini, the Mac Mini, Mini, Mini Air. Mini. The Mac Nano. The Mac Nano, yes. Mac Done. Nano. That's happening. Uh, no, but I mean, I think, like, you look at this. It has, it has the HDMI ports. It has USB. There's great desktop software for uh, even capturing live TV and running it that way. Uh, ITV makes really good stuff. Right. Um, you get a big hard drive. You get Bluetooth for your remote or whatever you want to use. Mm -hmm. uh, you get decent graphics. I mean, for here, like, the, the 4,000, the integrated graphics that Scott was lamenting are probably going to be fine for streaming video onto a right. 1080p TV. So that's less of an issue. Um, so but what else do you want? I mean, it's, I guess you have to buy a TV and then plug this thing in and use a keyboard and mouse. But it seems like the perfect home theater solution to me. I, I have a four-year-old Mac Mini running on my TV at home. Uh, and I, it's what I use for everything because it's so much easier. Like I have a Western Digital set-top box. Right. Uh, and it's just the clunkiest, worst, slowest thing ever to watch Hulu. 
and I can just go to Hulu.com, and it's the same as I use on my computer. And right. it's like I don't see why people aren't excited about this. But neither Apple nor humans, except for me and John, <laughs> seem to really care. Although you're you're starting to see a little bit with the whole like iOSification of OS X because you have full screen mode now that yeah. gets rid of the clutter. So it does make a much more compelling experience. I think Mountain Lion is the most friendly for uh, for TVs yeah, because totally. of that. Because you and you've got the gestures. You can just get like a magic trackpad on your couch and do some pretty cool stuff. Right. With it. Which, you know, it, it's a compelling argument. It's $600, though. Right. Uh, for 250 I can get an Xbox with... Fair. But, you know, so I, I know we're getting a weird situation, but if we're talking like a home set-top box solution, obviously Hulu Plus uh, is something you have to pay for. Hulu on the website, not so much. There sure. are other benefits. Um, but what I want to know, and this is also an Apple TV question, uh, does the Apple TV specs go up or does the Mac Mini specs... Or does the Apple TV specs go up? Or does the Mac Mini price go down? It's an interesting point. Uh, and what I would love is if they would build all of the Apple TV functionality into the Mac Mini. Like they have the the crazy front row app. Right. Is that still there I on OS X? It's God, gone. It's gone. Is it oh, gone? that's so. Sa- I mean, Thank I say you. it's sad, but I haven't used it in Thank four you. years and didn't even know that it was here. Uh, Unless it be the base but, guy that did that. Yeah, really. It's terrible. But so, but but why not replace that with the Apple TV interface? That would be awesome. That would be really cool. Um, that's like. Somebody do that. That's like the best idea I've ever had. Somebody do that. Really, just put, um, just take, take the hockey puck of the Apple TV, just shove put it, it inside in the hockey the puck yeah. of the Mac Mini. Yeah, yeah. that's what it's, it's a bigger it's a bigger hockey puck. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really think that this could be. Uh, I think five ninety nine might be a little too expensive if they could, you know, sell a worse version or <laughs> make it cheaper. But again, like if if you're spending, you know, if you're willing to spend a thousand dollars plus on a TV, right. Uh, this doesn't seem like that crazy an expenditure to put next to it and, and replace all kinds of other stuff. Right, although I do question what needs you have. And this is, brings back to the ecosystem question that brings back to sure. the competition. Um, we're now seeing an Xbox 360 for $250 with you know great graphics. It does great compelling games if that's something you want to do. has a huge video library. And it now has web browsing. Uh, and Smart Glass, which is launching this Friday, uh, will at one point be a ubiquitous platform that you can use to control that. You can send videos. You can send websites. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's like AirPlay through the It's exactly like the AirPlay, yeah. yes. Um, but there's more functionality. And right. again, if you can use all these different devices, there's more ubiquity, arguably. You all have a smartphone, and something is going to have smart glass on it, uh, which I think is a smart way of doing it. I think the Xbox 360 is so much cheaper, and you can you know, save that money and buy sure. whatever you want to buy with that. An Xbox 720 next year when it comes out. There you go. And you know what? It's not that much bigger, you know, I'd argue. Like, okay, it is. True. No, it's, I mean, it's much it's, bigger, but like for a set top box. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and I would argue that like for, for the two things you're going to put next to your TV, most people don't care about how big they are. Right. Like, it's, it's a, everybody's used to having like the stack next to their TV. And as nice as that would be to go away, it's not going to go away. So you might as well just right. get the and best in terms thing. And in terms of industrial design, I don't think the Xbox 360 is that ugly. That, not the redesigned one that came out no, a couple years ago. I don't think so either. No. Um, so when I'm looking at that, like you're saying you want this Mac Mini, I'm saying like as long as I can get like smart glasses of functionality on something, the ubiquity of that app on whatever I have in my pocket, I think the Xbox 360 is a, comparing, is a compelling alternative for a much cheaper price. That's totally fair. Uh, let's see what Josh and Eli Let's think. hear what Josh and Eli have to say. Josh and Eli, you're on the phone. Tr- well, not on the phone, actually. You're live in the uh, You're on the crazy San Jose that we use. We're, we're live. We're can you hear us? Are we? Is this working? Yeah, we can hear That's you. That's a great yeah. earpiece. Can you see the terrific. California theater? The majestic California theater what? behind us? Are you commenting on my earpiece? I did. And I wanted to see how time delayed it was. Yeah, I told Sam. I told Sam this uh, wasn't hanging properly, but he ignored me completely. <laughs> no, you look like you're uh, like so a we're outside service. the California theater. In- I am in the Secret Service. <laughs> yes. I didn't tell you, did I? This uh, is the time delay. So we're outside the California theater uh, in in San Jose. If you guys would shut up, that'd be great. I've got a lot of stuff to say. Um, and uh, we just got done with the event. We just got yeah. done handling all of the new gear. Uh, a jam-packed event. Jam-packed actually. event. And full like, of stuff. Full, also full of people. Very yeah. tight inside the event. Yeah. Um, so, so what do you want to know? What do you? What's on your mind right now? What's the heated uh, discussion that's happening right now in living rooms across America? Well, we can argue numbers and specs and stats all we want, and we have, uh, and also Les Miserables, but we'll get to that later. Josh, Neil, what I want to know is, how does it feel? Let, let us live vicariously through you. You said you, you said it's like a level above the Nexus 7 and Kindle Fire HD. Like, that's a that's a big yes. claim. And what does oh, that even yeah. mean? Uh, Question. Yeah. 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 It, 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 it blows away the Nexus 7 and, and really any other 7-inch tablet or something in this range that's on the market. I mean, it's thinner. It's lighter. It feels like extremely solid. I mean, hey, imagine if Apple made a seven-inch or so <laughs> iPad, yeah. uh, and you get an idea of what the it feels like. The closest thing is, it's a. It feels like a 
the build quality is like the iPhone. Like they yeah. made a much bigger yeah. iPhone. And it, same it, technique, same material. It is kind of a hybridized design in between the iPad, the last generation iPad, and the iPhone. It's got the yeah. chamfered edge, and it's got the black backing like the iPhone. But the actual body design feels it's, a lot like the, the. It's rounded off. Yeah, it's rounded off. It's like the third gen iPad or fourth gen iPad. Um, it just feels really nice, and the screen looks really great. I will say this, you know. Uh, the screen resolution looks better than it does on the iPad 2. You know, a yeah. smaller screen, you get tighter pixel density. I think it looks a lot better. Um, I did get a chance to hold it next to my Nexus 7, and I think the screen quality is better. Yeah. But you definitely see more pixels on the Mini, on the iPad Mini than on the yeah. than on the Nexus 7. So I mean, you know, it's not as high resolution, it's not as high pixel density as as some of its competition. But I will, you know, I will say the Nexus 7 has. A pretty okay average screen. Yeah, very average. Uh, it's very pretty washed out, and the the actual quality of the images on the the new iPad, the iPad Mini. The bl yeah, the blacks yeah. were were much deeper. The colors popped a lot more. I mean, quality wise, qualitatively speaking, yeah. it's a nicer display. But but pixel density wise, right. as as I wish Paul Miller could hear right <laughs> now, uh, it, it it definitely suffers a little bit. You know, yeah, it, lower just, resolution, bigger screen. It's I mean, lower it resolution, screen, it's a little bit bigger. Density. But I will say, like, it, the device feels like an Apple product, you know? It feels nicer than something like, even the iPod Touch, which you guys have played with the new iPod Touch, it feels higher quality than that. Yeah. It feels like a step above that. So um, I think in terms of materials and design, uh, weight and uh, and just general quality, like it's 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 way beyond what they're doing with the Nexus Seven or even with the with the Kindle. And why they, they feel they do feel like toys in comparison. But you know well, what's interesting is that the, at three twenty nine, it doesn't feel like they're necessarily competing against the Nexus Seven directly or the Kindle Fire HD directly. Yeah. Uh, because I think there's still a huge market for one ninety nine products. I actually, uh, yeah, I actually think that that in a lot of ways, and and Avi Greengard, who's here with us, I'm looking at him right now, who's going to join us in a second. Um, talked about we were just talking about the price point and I do think that uh, there is something to uh, this is almost like you know what I was going to buy an iPad too or yeah. maybe I was even thinking about getting the, the, the big iPad but I don't know if I want something that big but I do want to have all the apps yeah. and I feel like that's a different question than if you say well I want a $200 tablet I can throw in my bag yeah. or like use for reading I mean it's, it's definitely it feels bigger to hold and use yeah. than the Nexus 7, like it's by a, far. That, it could be because it's actually bigger. I mean, it is actually it's bigger, but physically. It's, you know. uh, well, it's thinner. It's a small, it is thinner. Can something be bigger okay. and smaller at the same time? <laughs> Those laws of physics. Sure, why is not? That, laws of physics are more uh, like we'll uh, suggestions. Right? But, yeah, but I mean, but you'll, you'll see, I mean, I think people are going to freak out for it. Just when we were here at the event, uh, it's hard to capture how bonkers the crowd went uh, when... Uh, Phil Schiller, you know, cued the video that showed the big iPad rotating yeah, with to show the, small the smaller iPad, iPad behind it. People freaked out. Yeah, I mean, oh, there were a lot of Apple people in the there audience. There were a lot of Apple in people in the audience. In defense of the audience, I was or in sitting defense next of... to an Apple person who was like, could not, Tears. she couldn't restrain herself. Tears she, of the eyes. She wanted to continually leap <laughs> up and like, start applauding. But I do think, I, I, I do think there is something. You know, this is a new product for them. You yeah. know, we've seen iterative products for a while now. The iPhone was an iterative version of the previous iPhone. Um, this is a different product. Yeah. It, it has different uses. It's a new form factor for them. You know, they haven't done, yes, it's an iPad, and yes, it's just a smaller iPad, but it is new. And we haven't actually seen a lot of new stuff. Like, even the MacBook Pro with the Retina display, the 13 inch, is just an iteration, an iteration of the 15 inch. Well, I, have, the, I have actually a lot to say about the MacBook Pro. Well, we're not going to well, get, let's, let's, let's get, let's get to the iPad but Mini here's my first. question. I think this is. Uh, yeah, but so here's. I think the most important question for Apple, they've got iPhone apps and they've got iPad apps and they're saying it's every inch an iPad. You can just run all these iPad apps on this new screen size. But the one thing that they've proven is that targeting apps towards a particular screen size is like the, the path to success. Yeah. Right. That's the problem app uh, Android had yeah. where the apps work on every screen size are not completely targeted. It's kind of a mess. Right. Do you think they're going to start targeting apps towards the, the iPad mini screen size, or it will just always be a slightly shrunken iPad. So Neil, well, Neil, let me, let I mean, me, that's an interesting question, and I think let, that... Let me, uh, we have actually uh, an interesting thing. We talked about this with a... Uh, I don't... You know what? I, I, can, I can talk now. This is, this is fun. Actually, we get to control this a little bit. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, we talked to Andrew Allen, who's a 53 <laughs> designer. Ross has gone mad with power. <laughs> you, you've missed the last hour. It's been wonderful. Uh, we talked to Andrew Allen, the 53 designer. He does the paper app. Uh, he made an interesting point that the touch, uh, the touch spots on the apps... Um, are smaller. You can't obviously design uh, different from the iPad Mini to the iPad uh, Retina displays. All you can do is change the assets. So where you're touching is now much smaller for every iPad app. Do you think that's going to be an issue? Well, no, the that, apps? Actually, 
Oh, I was actually going to comment on that uh, to your point and, and to that point. Uh, and I mentioned it in my in the write up of the hands on uh, the keyboard in portrait feels really squished. It feels really little. I mean, it's like they've just scaled down that keyboard. Right. And it's, so it's not as tall. Uh, and as a result, it does feel like the touch points are a little bit harder to get at, at least in, in that case. Sorry, I'm getting a call. Of course, <laughs> that makes sense. Um, but uh, I do think that there's going to be some touch points and some stuff to consider uh, that are going to feel a little bit awkward on the smaller yeah. uh, on the smaller device. But when you think about think about your favorite iPad apps, how many of them involve you hunting around trying to tap on a little button? Right. It's really like oh the back button or a couple of the interface buttons at the bottom. I mean, most of the iPad apps I use and know are relatively uh, spacious. And sometimes even too spacious. Yeah. Thank God this iPad Mini exists. <laughs> I, I'm so sick of the screen real estate of the iPad, the third generation iPad. Uh, it really is going to be a breath of fresh air to not have as much to look at. That's Thank right. you. <laughs> Thank you, Apple. Uh, uh, no, but I do think I do think that's a concern, and I and I think that look, people are going to complain about it, but I don't think it's as I think it's less of a concern than having to take a phone app and put it on a seven inch yeah. or ten inch tablet. And I think, like, if Android's problem is that, like, you have to scale up a phone app and Apple's problem is you have to scale down an actual iPad app for a slightly smaller iPad, I'd rather have Apple's problem than, than the Android problem. Yeah, and I, I get the feeling – I was surrounded by developers, actually, at, at this event. Apple had brought a lot of developers here. And I get the feeling that they're all – that they're priming them – to have the apps work better across devices. Priming the pump. Priming the pump. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, a the Apple spent a lot of time today, Tim Cook in particular, spent a lot of time uh, hyping the app advantage that Apple has, 275,000 iPad apps. Yeah. At one point, you know, very out of character for Apple, uh, he compared the iPad Mini directly to the Nexus 7. It was pretty brutal. Uh, it, it was I mean, he a, went right at it. He, it like, well, he, they, he, they came all, he went all the way to, this is a piece of crap, yeah. and stopped. Well, they did, he was, like, I, waving at that line from across I, the I, I will say, I will say this. They did the comparison uh, of the Twitter app uh, on Android yeah. a couple of events ago, maybe when they announced the new iPad, right. the new new old iPad, which is, by the way, only six months old. Um, and uh, I did, I was actually kind of surprised. I thought it was really telling that Apple was directly responding to the Nexus 7. I mean, this product is saying, I mean, they said without question on, during the presentation, here's our co competition. Yeah. Here's the best Android here's, tablet. Here's the best yeah. Android tablet, and here's what we're competing against, and here's where it has deficiencies, and here's where we're going to win. Um, I'm actually surprised that they weren't able to step in and say, like, Apple has, has this kind of bravado where they can walk into a market that already exists and go, like, it's yeah. the first ever in this, you know, that's ever been designed. You know, like, they, they will tell you they created the tablet market, you know, which they basically did, the modern tablet market. They would never mention there have been, you know, yeah. other older tablets, tablets or older tablets or that there were some, I mean, let's not even think about the old tablets. But, <laughs> but I do think it's interesting that they had to respond and that this is a response in some way to the, the desire in the market for a smaller tablet. Right. And I think, again, you know, with the, the pricing stuff, it's they – made whatever product they wanted at this size and said people are going to buy it at 329 instead of trying to get to 199 yeah. and I feel like Google with the Nexus 7 spent a lot of time and energy getting it to 199 because yeah. that's how they I mean that's how they had to compete I think $129 golf between these two products is not insignificant I think there's still going to be people and the Fire HD as well yeah. there's still going to be people who say I don't want to spend they're going to look at it and go like Oof, it's almost like 400 bucks to buy this you yeah. know 330 is that's not almost 400 but you know what i mean but so uh, but, it's closer to 400 than 200 but the uh, vibe you can't the disagree event. with that you could not <laughs> deny that uh, but the vibe of this event i mean uh, this uh, compared to the iphone event much uh, much bigger it, the iPhone event was bigger, but it was far more no, subdued this, in a this way. No, this was bigger. You think this was bigger? I thought this was a bigger event. I thought that it was a... Uh, it uh, had more stuff. I thought that it was a more exciting event for them. Yeah. They seemed more energized about this. Uh, I mean, Phil Schiller was, like, excitedly... Yeah. I mean, he was actually moving quickly for through some... He, they were rushing. So, yeah. you know, Ross, uh, the, the last time we, at the iPhone event, I, you know, when you take pictures, you get a very keen sense of how fast they're moving. Right. Uh, so I took pictures of the iPhone event and they moved very slowly. Yeah. They rushed through some things but it was very like on point. They drew it out. Uh, this one was they were moving so fast that I couldn't take a picture of every slide they showed which is an absolute rarity for an Apple event. Yeah. Because usually they actually just go through all the bullets no, I, I, I and then getting... Tim Cook is usually very good about standing in front of the slide and smiling at me so I can take the and like none <laughs> of were, that happens. They were moving considerably faster and I, and yeah. I thought that like the general mood First of all, I think this space was, uh, it was very, obviously very dramatic, you know, yeah. a big theater, big old theater like this. But I just felt like the, the, the mood of everybody uh, on, on the Apple team and uh, on stage yeah. 
just seems to be like everybody's really excited about this product. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like more excited than the iPhone 5. Yeah. I think, and maybe it's because it's new. Maybe it's because it's a different place. Um, maybe they're loosened up by doing two events within a month of each other. <laughs> they're just ready to go. But um, I thought the excitement was palpable. Yeah. And, and, the, and uh, the hands-on here was just out of control. I mean, it was a smaller, because it's a theater and not one of their more traditional conference venues, it was a really small, like, packed hands-on. They basically built an Apple store yeah. uh, upstairs. A very narrow Apple store. A very store. small Apple store. Yeah. Uh, and it was like Lord of the Flies <laughs> like, it was like in there to get the iPad in a, in, a, in a New York subway. Yeah. If you can imagine, not not the restaurant, an actual subway uh, car. And, but, no, I mean, there was just this enormous flood of people to yeah. to see this thing and in a much more, like, excitable way than I think I've seen with the I iPhone was, or, it was, uh, or other products. It was, frankly, terrifying. <laughs> and I feared for I my I killed life. a man. I, I killed two. I was, I was hungry. I got to one up you. <laughs> um, so I actually have to. Gonna go. I, I have to go. Unfortunately, I, I, I may be back, um, but I, I have to break away for a moment. And we also want to bring Avi out. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to switch off. Any any questions for me before I before I jet? Do you guys want to know anything? Is there anything that Josh Topolsky can tell you that another person couldn't? I think we're good, Josh. Um, I think Neil, I can answer on? everything. Oh, we're still on. Uh, I do want to ask Neil a little bit about maps uh, later, since we didn't actually get to hear about that. But they, he can they, rage for you. You're done with me. Yeah, they're, yeah, we're done. We're done. Go away. Goodbye. You don't. You don't, you don't care at all. <laughs> get no, out of here, need Josh. Me. That's no. Nope. Really, come, come over here. You really feel. Ross, we're gonna. I'm gonna interview Avi for a couple of minutes, and then I can answer all the rest of your questions. You do your thing. We're just gonna. Yeah. We're gonna sit you're, back you're here. Attached to me. Don't mind us. Take this thing. I don't. Are we off the air? Are we on the air? Is this just chaos? Are we staying on the air? What's going on? Oh, I guess we're staying on the air. Um, that overly dramatic uh, hangout. I was hoping we'd be cut. This, uh, yeah, it's I don't know. There, there's a transition. Part. I really want to just that. end going like this. They have to build the Avi Greengart <sighs> in front of this so we can do it. I build my Legos. So I was just laughing while they were reading it because you know how I mentioned Josh having uh, really huge really hands. Special. Yeah. Uh, Buzzfeed has a has a great post with a bunch of pictures of people like really awkwardly holding the iPad Mini, uh, including a screenshot from our site, and it says the guy from The Verge looks like he's cradling a plate. As he's holding it, and Josh is just like manhandling this thing. It's pretty great, man. Um, I mean, yeah, with Josh's hands, I know it'll be it'll fit in one hand. I wear it with my own hands. Yeah. Well, but so one of the things that Neil and I talked about, which I'm curious what you think about, is uh, the the kind of middle ground price that Apple found with this, right. uh, where you have you know four ninety nine for the the premium best tablets. That seems to be like the base price right. we found for high end stuff. All right. And we'll talk about this later. We're going to go back to Neil. You, you asked me half a question, and then, like, I'll finish Neil, I came back. We got time. That's fine. Uh, Are we back? We're back. Hello? Do your thing. Hey, guys. Uh, so I've got Avi Greengard here. Avi is, a, you know, I would say the, the best analyst in the industry. Uh, and actually, I heard you guys talking about price points. And, Avi, I want to kind of get into it with you. So Apple's got a product at 329 with the iPad Mini. They've got a whole bunch of competition at 199 and a kind of a mass of amorphous, not so successful competition uh, at 499 and above. What, I mean, what's your take on the Mini and its price point? Well, I mean, I think that uh, it's a fair price uh, for what you're getting. You're getting a premium product. And I think that's actually what Apple has done here. They've created sort of a new segment of the, the tablet market, of the small tablet market, um, at a higher price point that just, that just does a lot more. So... Uh, that doesn't mean that there isn't a market. I agree with what you were saying earlier, that there is a market for a 199 tablet, and that uh, if you are, for example, if you're just looking to consume content and you're looking for a small tablet, a lightweight tablet for that, then uh, maybe the Kindle Fire HD is, is the right product for you. Maybe uh, Nook's color, uh, uh, the, the Nook HD is the right product for you. Um, or if you want a little bit more versatility and a little bit more complexity, um, then the, the Nexus 7 is, is a great product there. Um, um, but if what you're looking for is an entry point into Apple's uh, iOS ecosystem, you want those 275,000, I would call them almost like bespoke experiences, um, where, I mean, look, there are things you can do on an iPad that you can't do on any of the other products, and then there are things that you can do on the other products that are just better on the iPad. So let me ask you this. With the big iPad, uh, is that, we're just going to call it the big iPad for okay. now, I guess. Uh there is a big market of people who are saying, you know, it's a laptop replacement. This is the future of computers, right? You've got cars and trucks, and the trucks are the laptops, and the tablets are the, are the cars, and everyone's going to have a car sooner or later. This product is small. I mean, it's physically smaller. It doesn't feel like you could replace your laptop with it. Is that going to dilute Apple's message there, or are they still kind of pursuing this, this post-PC strategy? Well, I don't know that that was ever really Apple's... Uh 
explicit. Cars and trucks. Is too yes, the, the the cars and trucks analogy is, um, and there's no question that. Um, Speaking of trucks, by the way, uh, there's the, the fire truck is going by. That's probably Apple's fire truck. <laughs> so. Uh, I do agree that you can't do some of the things that you would do. I mean, I, I carry around, there have been times when I've carried around uh, the big iPad uh, with uh, Logitech's uh, keyboard cover and used it as sort of a laptop replacement. But at the, <laughs> why are you shoving the microphone <laughs> up my nose? Okay, all right, all right. That's what these people are telling you. You want me to hold it then? All right, is this better? All right, and we're supposed to look at the camera. <laughs> we're supposed to look at the camera? Okay. Um, Can we start singing then? If you'd like me to. So uh, I do think that there are there are use cases where uh, the 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 iPad Mini uh, fits where a regular iPad doesn't. Um, I was just thinking. Now this is just personally. This isn't industry analysis. This is guy sitting in the audience going, "I want one of these." Um, if you take a, a MacBook Air and you take an iPad Mini, you've covered all my use cases for for when I'm on the road. Um, I can get my writing done, um, and I can uh, consume media. Um, I can bra use iOS apps, some of which don't really have analogs uh, on the full size truck um, uh, of the uh, of the Air, and so. Um, I do think that uh, you're, you're right that this doesn't quite fit as a full laptop replacement. But again, it also depends on what you're talking about in terms of uh, of post PC laptop replacementism. Um, if what you're using your laptop for is Facebook um, and YouTube videos, and Lord knows there are a lot of people who you know, that's that is a, a reason to use it, um, then this you know, then the smaller size may be perfect and. When you're looking at a not an individual purchaser who's going, hmm, I should buy a, an iPhone and an iPod Touch, and you do all the impressions. <laughs> Who is this person? Um, it's uh, the, the it's the inner me. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're, if, I mean, we often think in terms of, well, gosh, um, Apple has products this big, this big, this big, and this big, and uh, now, now they're going you know, to expect me to buy one of each of them. Um, but uh, what if you're not talking about an individual? You're talking about a household, um, and you have kids. Um, I have lots of kids, um, and um, that's a that's a confession, um, and. Uh, you want to give your kids something so that they leave your full-size iPad alone, or um, you have someone who wants to get online and do a quick uh, Google search, or if you have someone who who's, who wants to be on Facebook, and there are a limited number of devices you have in your house that do that, well, the iPad Mini does fit into that sort of laptop replacement post-PC uh, paradigm, and um, it does so at a lower price than a full-size big iPad. I need a mic. I just need to ask you another question, then you can then you can go again. So, before I let you go, give me give me a rough estimate. I mean, how many of these things you can think they're going to sell before uh, for the holidays? A lot, just a lot. Yeah, I mean that's the one thing that, as an analyst, the type of analysis I do is I don't do forecasts. Thank <laughs> God. Um, I will say that um, when they uh, first launched the original iPad, um, I I. I, I did come up with a ballpark figure, and I talked to my contacts at Apple and said, yeah, that's what we think, too, and we were both very, very wrong. Okay. Well, then, I won't ask for an exact number. Avi, thanks so much for joining us today for a little bit. My pleasure. Ross? Nice. Yeah. Thanks, man. Ross, David, I'm all, I'm all yours, man. What do you need Sweet. to do? So, uh, I, I want to go first. I want to know about the iMac. Uh, it, it seemed like everybody like kind of lost their mind when it came out, and everybody was talking about how thin it was and all this stuff. So, like, is it is it really as incredible as they make it sound? Uh, so what happened was so when the iMac came out, they uh, they showed they they did a very dramatic introduction. The iMac is a masterpiece of like visual trickery. Uh, so they, it came out and it was super thin and it looked as, as thin as like the screen on a MacBook Pro. Uh, and then uh, Phil Schiller rotated it and you you see the gigantic round back. Uh, and gigantic is the wrong. It's not gigantic. It's just compared to how thin you think it is, the actual depth of it is is like surprising. Uh, so it does look very. It looks very thin, uh, and it's a really aggressive kind of bit of like optical engineering that you've got this like flat five millimeter edge. Uh, but as soon as you kind of get around it all the way, you see how how deep it really is. Uh, and so they did make it thinner, and that uh, you know they got rid of the optical drive, and they're doing this crazy fusion drive thing inside, which sounds to me like a regular hy hybrid hard drive, but. Um, the, the, the thing that shocked people, the thinness, uh, kind of dissipated as soon as you 
get physically in front of it, and you see that there is depth behind it. Um, I will say the display of the iMac is, like, gorgeous. Uh, they're not calling it a retina display. I don't think they can do the visual acuity math they need to do uh, in terms of pixel density to call it a retina display. Um, but all the other kind of like techniques are there, right? So it's it's optically bonded. They're using the same scaling software on the Retina MacBook Pro. Uh, they're pixel doubling it, all that stuff, and it looks beautiful. So you know, I think they just I think the average distance that you sit away from a desktop uh, doesn't let them say it's a Retina display. But if you get a little bit farther back, uh, you definitely can't see the pixels. Right, uh, Neil. I want to ask you a little bit about the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina. Um, we were having this argument earlier. It's got, uh, it's got integrated graphics. It's closer to the MacBook Air in terms of graphic quality, but it's also outputting four times the number of pixels. How was the performance when you were trying out the 13-inch Retina Pro? Uh, so I, when they announced the 13-inch Retina, I like, freaked out. Like That's the computer that I want um, because I don't want to run it at Retina resolution. I want to run it at the same resolution as my 15-inch MacBook Pro, uh, and you can do it. It runs. You can set it to run it uh, 1680 by 1050, which is my computer's resolution. So... I was very excited about it, and then they announced the integrated graphics, and I was very sad. Um, but so I, I got to play with it a little bit, uh, and I, you know, there was a big crowd of people, and it, you know, was, we didn't get to do everything we wanted to do. But I did run the 1080p Iron Man trailer uh, simultaneously with like a multi-track GarageBand file, like one of the demo files, while scrolling around a 21 megapixel RAW file in Aperture, all at the same time. Uh, and the CPU monitor only ever hit 50 percent. Uh, did, you know, it spiked above it here and there a little bit, but it kind of was steady at 50%. So my sense is that Apple's figured out how to push all those pixels. I mean, it's a, it's not a great graphics card. Nobody's excited about it. Um, but Apple's kind of figured out how to make it perform adequately with that stuff. I think we'll have to see, you know, for me, I think that's enough, right? I mean, I come to events, I take photos, I put them on the internet. I think that's going to be great for me, and the screen resolution is great. Uh, for, you know, people, Jordan, our video producer, he still had a big quizzical look on his face when I was doing all this stuff with it. So I think we'll have to, you know, put it through the review uh, and see what the performance is really like. But just at a quick glance, trying to max it out, uh, I really couldn't push it much harder uh, than that. Technical follow-up question. Uh, what did you think of the Iron Man trailer? Uh, so <laughs> I'm really irritated because I never <laughs> actually got to watch it. Because I was like, I put it on, and then I had to like listen to this crappy Garage Band guitar lick uh, while scrolling around a photo. So the corner of it seemed amazing, and I will say that the default Garage Band guitar lick uh, song uh, works really well with it. It's kind of like a Dark Side of the Moon thing. Uh, but other than that, I didn't get to see it. So, Neil, I sit tight for one second. We've got uh, hands-on with the new MacBooks, I believe. Uh, so we're just going to run that, and then we have lots more questions for you. Hey, guys. It's Neil with The Verge. I'm here with the new 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina Display. Uh, it looks very much like the previous MacBook Pro, only it is far, far thinner uh, because it emits the optical drive. Uh, it's got some new ports here. It's, it's got the new MagSafe port. It's got two Thunderbolt ports, USB 3. On the other side, it's got an HDMI port, obviously the SD card slot, and another USB 3. Um, obviously, the, the big change here is the Retina display. Uh, this has an effective resolution of 1280 by 800, but because it's pixel doubled, you can't see the pixels. It looks amazing. You can also run it at 1680 by 1050, which is the resolution of the old 15-inch MacBook Pro, which is great. So this has a lot of potential for Pro users. If you have a 15-inch MacBook Pro, there's, uh, you have every reason to look at this. And particularly important is this thing seems to perform really, really well. Uh, so we put together kind of an insane test here. I've got GarageBand open, uh, I've got a, the 1080p Iron Man 3 trailer, and I've got Aperture with a 21 megapixel RAW file open. This is the CPU monitor. You can see all four cores are kind of barely doing anything. I'm going to start Iron Man. I'm going to start GarageBand. Uh, this is a cacophony of sound. And I'm going to start scrolling around in Aperture. Let's get Iron Man open here. Uh, and you can see Everything's just kind of working pretty well, and the CPU is only about at half. So although it has integrated graphics, Intel HD 4000 graphics, uh, and it's pushing this ultra-high resolution screen, uh, performance seems to be actually really great, uh, erasing kind of a big worry people had about those graphics powering this display. So that is the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. Uh, it's a great product. Uh, if you're like me and you have a 15-inch MacBook Pro, uh, you have a, a whole new reason to want a smaller computer. Neil, are you still with us?
Yeah, I'm here. Cool. It's funny because that I just literally heard myself say everything I just said. <laughs> it was pretty you. awesome. It was it was pretty awesome. So I'm that's, here for you, Ross. You made the interesting point that uh, this is a 15 inch. Uh, if you have a 15 inch Pro, this is a great uh, alternative. What if you have an Air? Do you feel like this is a good upgrade? Do you think yeah. it's worth it? Uh, it's definitely thicker than the Air. Uh, it, and it's it's a more you know, it's just a more massive machine. There's more going on in there. Um, I wouldn't be racing to upgrade if I had an air. Uh, but if I was, if I was one of the many, many people who want to move down, like down the line to the air, I would probably stop at the 13 inch pro. Uh, cause that, I mean, that's, it's, it, the screen is incredible, right? So, uh, looking at that screen versus looking at the air screen, I think is a no brainer. So if you're wanting to go down to the, I think Apple has to figure out uh, what its next move is with these machines because the Air is extremely thin and light. It's a beautiful computer, but the it's clearly surpassed one level technologically by the Pro. And, you know, maybe that's for the best. You know, for the longest time, there's I couldn't think of a good reason to get the 13-inch Pro uh, over the Air, and now you know, there's a couple really good reasons to do it. So maybe Apple's stratifying its, its line a little bit more that way, but I would definitely get the Pro over the Air. That's great. We've gotten a lot of impressions on your hands-ons about... Uh, the iPad Mini, the iMac, the MacBook Pro. Uh, got your impressions from the theater. The one thing I want to ask about you personally, Neil, uh, when we were kind of planning for this event, we were talking, what is Tim Cook going to say? We were kind of convinced he'd bring up maps a little bit. Uh, I remember you particularly thought he would actually bring up maps in some way. They did the public apology. Not a single mention at all. So Yeah. Like uh, I don't know, man. Uh, they talked about iOS 6 a lot. They talked about how great their software is. They talked about all their successes. Uh, did not, you know, Apple events are structured very predictably, right? So, you know, they're always the same. We sit down, we get a bunch of stats about how well they're doing. There's always a shot of the an Apple store, usually in some far-flung place that I can't go to. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, there's a little bit of an update on something, right? Uh and I, it seemed like you know the maps would be a great place to to go and say, you know, we're we're basically turning what has been a, a bit of a failure into a success. We're updating it. We're making it work better. Uh, and they just didn't do it. And I kind of understand why. You know, at the moment I didn't understand, but they did so much today. They packed so much into this event. Uh, when they were doing the Mac Mini, for example, it, it, it went by so fast that it, it, if you blinked, you missed it. Like he was just basically like, "Here's a list of specs. I'm gonna read them as fast as I can." Uh, look at all these ports. Okay, that's Mac Mini. Got to go. Oh, there's a server version, thousand dollars. By the way, let's talk about the iMac. It's really thin. Got to go. And like, it was uh, about as fast as I've ever seen Apple go through an event. So, you know, spending time talking about a failure, you know, this this kind of machination between, you know, this didn't work out well and we fixed it. Here's an improvement. Uh, when they could just talk about products that I think people are very excited about, I, I understand why they didn't do it. I think it would have been nice to see. Uh, kind of a metric update, you know, uh, on where the maps were and where, and where they've come, but th that'll just happen over time. And, you know, to be honest, the iPhone 5 is selling gangbusters. This iPad mini is going to sell crazy. I don't think people are worried about the maps. Are you going to grab mini? They're expecting Apple to fix it, and Apple's working on fixing it. Are you going to grab an iPad the mini what? when it comes Your out? Mini. What? No. Really? Really? Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I, have the, I have this new game I play with Apple products where I swear up and down that I'm not going to buy it. Uh, and then I go to a store and I play with one and then I leave and then a couple of days later I come back and I, I say I'm not going to buy it and then I do. So, but I do that with everything. That's how I have a Nexus 7. That's probably how I'll end up with a Surface. Um, but you know, it's 329. It's not a, it's, it's, a, it's a, it's a surprisingly good price point. I think the next year we'll see one come at 249 and that'll like dramatically change the stakes of this game. But I, you know, I think Apple wanted to make a, I think Apple targeted the form factor, and they built whatever product they needed to build that form factor, and that hit 329. I think next year, you know, if they do it the way they did with the original iPad, where they brought it down 100 bucks, uh, you know, that could that could really make an impact on, on these lower price tablets. I think Google still has a lot of um, a lot of potential at 199 with the Nexus 7, and I, you know, I think we'll probably see some updates to the Nexus 7 coming shortly. Right, and we'll definitely talk about that more. Obviously, I think we're going to do another Vergecast on Thursday after the Microsoft event. We'll probably do another one on Monday to talk about Google. Yeah, there's only like 30 more there's events. There's only 30 more events. This yeah. is the first Fine. Uh, event, which is really weird to think yeah. about. This week is it's a, long, it's a long week we've got out of us. I mean, you know, I'll say a, kind of a final thought here is that um, it's very rare to, you know, when we, when we did the iPhone 5 event, it was Apple's focus on the iPhone 5, uh, and they put out these iPods, um, and, you know, the iPod Touch is great, and the iPod Nano is like, why did you make this? Um, and they're, they're, Apple's story 
didn't seem like it had gelled, right? They were just updating this phone. The software seemed very kind of like timid. Now, kind of in in some, the, the sheer amount of updates they've done to all of these products. You know, Tim Cook said on stage, you know, we've updated almost everything here. Uh, the only one that's missing is the Mac Pro. So, uh, sorry, guys, you're, no one's ever getting a new Mac Pro. <laughs> um, but they've updated all of their major products in really dramatic ways. Um, I think the iPhone has proven... Um, to be a bit more of a substantive upgrade. Uh, it's still you know, an iterative product, but I think now that people have them, they're seeing kind of the true level of, of, of update that it, it is over the, the 4S. Um, very few other companies are doing this level of like complete product line reinvention every year. Um, and I think what's really interesting is that Google and Microsoft, they've both got events this week. They're both going to, you know, particularly in Microsoft's case, they've got to reinvent Windows and say, here's our, here's the beginning of our tablet strategy. Whereas Apple is now saying, our tablet strategy is mature, the foundation's built, and we're, re- we're ready to start splitting it off into other products that hit, hit different targets and different price points. And, you know, Microsoft and Google have a lot of catching up. You know, Google's got to hit the top end of the market. You know, the Nexus 7 is a great product. It's, um, you know, for one and nine, I think it's frankly an amazing product. But Google has nothing to compete in, you know, 10 inches, nothing to say you should replace a laptop with this. Microsoft is going straight for you should replace a laptop with this and nothing to compete with. You can read with this or here's a smaller product. It's only Apple that's now hitting all of the kind of the marks uh, while still revamping all of its computers and doing all this other stuff that it's doing. So, you know, uh, I will say that I was pretty down after the iPhone 5. I, I thought the company needed to find, um, kind of a, a new path, a, a new aggression, kind of. Uh, but this event, and I think Josh was saying it too, this event to me is very aggressive. They're moving they're moving all their platforms forward. Even, you know, even if something is, is mundane and simple as uh, calling the new iPad with a lightning connector the iPad fourth generation, I mean, they're just showing off. Like, they're just flaunting that they can change a generation of the product that quickly. Uh, I mean, it really is just a third-gen iPad with a, a new processor and the lightning connector. Um, but they're, they're trying to move everything forward as fast as possible. And I think this whole week, uh, we're gonna, the industry will shake down after Google's done, after Microsoft is done, after, you know, Windows Phone 8 is coming out soon as well. Uh, so uh, there's, there's a lot more to come this week, but I think Apple's played a very strong hand here. Awesome. I think that's a great way of summing pretty much everything up. It's almost like you've been wanting to do this all day. All this pent up uh, need to talk, and we just had to make sure you get it out immediately. Yeah, that was like that was like written like you had a teleprompter or something. That was it that was, was nice. beautiful. <laughs> right, Jordan thanks. actually has been was standing in front of me writing it live. Nice. So all right, I you guys Jordan. go go do something other than cover an Apple event. Go get and, some rest, and we'll see you when you get back to New York. All right, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye. God, that time delay. I know. Is it feel worse this time? Well, it, it's, it, it has to go to space. Right. I don't know if you know that. That's it's right. going to space. <laughs> you can see it by, by the hand, just not caring at all anymore. Nah. We are nearing the two hour and 30 minute mark. We if are. you have stayed with us this long, please stay with us. We're going to go through credits and thank a lot of people. Uh, also, yeah, we love you. We love very, you. Very We've done much. that last time. People had a lot to say about that. We very love weird people. and sometimes I love ways. each of you individually. I love every single one of you all, all of the ways you. that are socially appropriate, and some of you even more so. Uh, but you've been here Mostly so long. Just let us get to the uh, the last question and then the credits. Tell everyone thank you. Mwah, bravissimos, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Meme. All right, credit time. But first, David, I got a question for you. Is this worth getting now? And let so, me cut you off because I wanted to do that. And I actually wrote that down and say I'm going to cut you off. I wanted to make sure I did that. So let me cut you off. Um, my concern is the MacBook Pro Retina 13-inch has the same problem as the iPad Mini might have, has the same problem as the first MacBook Air. It's a great idea. It's not there yet. Apple always does better second generations, and these are the first generations of product models. So I really want this, but I'm doing everything in my power not to pick it up. The iPad Mini 2, I think, is going to be like where I should enter, but I don't know. See, you're, you're crazy. You're completely insane. Like, just out of your mind, you should see a professional get help, please. I'm worried about you. I thought we were talking about... No, so about here's... Sorry, I, I, I got lost that, you, that, That's a completely so, another issue. Well, the, the reason you're wrong is, is that Apple is at this kind of unique place where they have these mature product lines that they can kind of spin off. Like, the iPad mini is not a new thing. It's all old stuff, just, you know, machined slightly differently. So it's like they, they get to launch a new product that is already a mature product. They already have 700,000 apps that work on the device. They already have, you know, all of these accessories with the lightning, well, not so many with the lightning connector, but they already <laughs> have this, this big ecosystem of stuff that supports Apple devices. And so the iPad mini 
it, it's not a first gen product. It's a, it's a fourth gen product or a third gen, depending on you know Apple, whatever Apple wants to call Let's it. Let's not forget iPhone naming and iPad naming. Right. No, but so just, it's it's angry. it's not a new product. And the the Retina MacBook Pro is in a sense it's a little newer just because the, this combination of specs and size and price has not really been put together before. But they've done all of these things. Like we know Apple can build a great high res display. We know Apple can build a capable MacBook Pro. Uh, so it, I feel like for they're in this place where I'm much less worried about the iPad Mini or the MacBook Pro being a viable product because Apple has proven all of these pieces before. It's just a matter of tweaking the formula ever so slightly. Whereas like building a 7-inch tablet for Google was this giant departure. Uh, doing it for Apple is, is just a slight tweak of an existing formula. Fair enough. Um, on that note, not entirely convinced, but then again, who am I kidding? Like Neil, I said, I'm probably going to buy it too. Yeah, well, you um, walk into the store and you're like, I don't want that, and then I'm just, magically it's in my pocket. Right. So on that note, I steal uh, we, should, we should really every just, day. We need to start wrapping up. We do. I'm going to go cut home. you off again just to wrap up, even though you wanted me to wrap up first and we kept it going. That's my fault, and I'm talking way fast to get this done. Um, other things coming up. Today we did our Windows 8 review. We gave it, what was it again? 8.8. .8. Really? Which was, I swear to you, not intentional. I swear to you. Not intentional. David Pierce lying to America and the world at large. Um, when the Windows 8 review come out, you should definitely check it out. You check out all our Apple coverage right now on TheVerge.com. We're having way more events coming up in the next oh, there's few days. Coming. Tons of Windows 8 reviews coming out for products. Yep. Um, first and third party at some point. Uh, we have the Microsoft Surface event. Um, Two-part event, I think, on Thursday. Correct. Then on Monday, we've got the Windows Phone event and we've got the Google event um, where we're Rumor has it will be next devices, a new version of Android, maybe yep. some Google Now stuff. Uh, all that coming, um, you know, if the powers that be, if we do not die of plague and we do not pass out in a trash can somewhere, we will be doing a Vergecast both those days, kind of talk about it, kind of wrap up everything it's been talking about. It's a big week in tech. It's a big, it's a big week in tech. I don't, I, have we ever had this big a week? Like, I, I honestly don't recall. can't remember. Even, like, I would put this above, like, CES in the CES sense that, like... CES is going to be so lame. This big that's, that's companies story, are playing though. their hands all at once. And like yes. that's crazy. That doesn't really happen very often. And this is like all the products that are going to come out in like in December. Like this is the holiday lineup. Right. As close to the holidays as you can get. Unlike CES where it's like here's a thing that you might maybe see someday in the future probably I, only in China. I think CES is going to be very boring this year. I agree. It's, it was boring last year, but like this is like when it just completely dies. Yeah, I agree. And it's going to be such a snoozer. Um, but we have all those and then um, Tuesday, October 30th on the Verge, we have Foursquare CEO Dennis Crowley. Paul Miller went to NASA, went to a couple other places. Maybe space. Uh, we don't we know. may have a few products Find out next to week. talk about. We may went to space. Maybe. Uh, we'll else? have a few products to talk about, uh, everything with the events, uh, a couple other surprises. There's a costume contest, and we will be giving away Samsung Galaxy Note 2s uh, to some of the best costumes, to some of the best audience participators. If you sit the best, I, I don't know. We have Note 2s. We're going to do something with them. And all I know is James Che, our designer, is already working on his Gangnam Style costume. So if you're going to do that, you've got to bring your A game. You've got to bring your A game, and you've got to dance the dance. All right? Uh, but please wear a costume. It'll be fun either way. Um, a lot of special things. A lot of people to thank today. I want to thank our guests. I want to thank Craig Mott, who's just a brilliant mind. I want to thank Andrew Allen. He's the 53 designer. made Paper App. Paper looks really good now on the iPad Mini. Uh, looking forward to the update. Avi Greengard, he's a research director for consumer devices at Current and Ellis. He's been a really great friend to the site. Uh, I've known him for a long time. Love the guy to death. Yeah. Also a bunch of Verge staff. Right. Uh, Nathan Ingram for talking numbers and knowing things about math that none of us do. Uh, Scott Lowe, Ellis Hamburger, Neli, and Josh, of course, even though he left because right. he's a jerk. Not to mention, in the studio right now, we've got Billy Disney, we've got John Lago Marcino, we've got uh, Brendan Murphy, Dan Joseph, uh, Michael Shane, of course, all the Vox Studio who basically built this and lets us talk for over two it and a half hours. It takes a village, people. Uh, I like to thank the, the guy that's like letting David pee right now. Thank you. <laughs> Just a beautiful person. Uh, obviously, we're losing it right now. For all the coverage, check out theverge.com. That's pretty much everything. Our, uh, oh, I am such wow. an, I am such an ass. He forgot two people. I've got Jordan Opplinger and Sam Thonis, who are out there with Josh and Eli doing all the video stuff and I, just being generally handsome and talented. Jordan people. and Sam, I am so sorry. I will I will apologize for you. You, you each get one punch in Ross's face. Maybe. Uh, just one. But who are we kidding? They're not going to watch two and a half hours of this. Fair enough. <laughs> all right, and speaking of which, neither should you. So we're going to go. Bye. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you later.